Oh, right, all right, all right. Back into Diamond Bronze to GM Part 2. We did a very short Part 1 last week. Uh, so Part 2, hopefully going to be a little bit more fleshed out. And honestly, what are we doing? We're basically continuing because this is such a big step uh, that we showed last week. The only change is we're going to simplify Zergverse Terran. I think we made it a bit too complicated last week. We're going to simplify it by staying single factory and really focusing very, very hard on trying to make sure that we get rid of that simple command card. Uh, yeah, so basically we're just going to try to make sure that we... Um, shot guys on gas. That we make TVZ nice and simple. But this is a TVT, so we'll talk about that when we get to it. For now, let's talk about the TVT. We're going to be benchmarking our push. Rally an SCV on there. There we go. Apparently I'd already put those guys on mineral, on the, the gas, and I forgot about it. Move it. It's a very sloppy start, guys. All right. So I don't think I was scouting at all, but let's go Reaper and Orbital. If you want, you can scout around for proxies just nearby with this SCV to be super safe. And remember, guys, our Reaper will scout down here on the right for proxy Reaper. We can build a factory the moment we have 100 gas. So pull a guy off to build that. Pull a guy off to build a depot. And then pull a third worker off. So you want two workers on one gas, one on the other. We can rally to this SCV. Command center has Good SCV, upgraded. drop mule. Queue up another Reaper, right? So we want two Reapers. And then we want to go for... Oh, thank you, Magnus. All right, let's just check for the proxy. And then we can go home with that. It helped me. I just wish I had more time to play. Thank you so much, Magnus Kingmaker. Really appreciate it. So we want to go for a command center there, guys. Now, the moment the command center is down, remember we want to put back on gas. So two on that, one on that. And if you want to play really safe, you could just build a cyclone here. But we're going to build a Hellion. And we're going to go for a reactor. The nice thing about building the Hellion first, even though it's not as good at fighting, is it builds a bit faster than the cyclone. 21 seconds versus 32. And uh, it's basically just a very nice unit for kind of sitting at home and defending. So we're going to be going for a uh, Cyclone next. And then if you want, you can move across with the Reaper Hellion or you can leave it at home. It's totally up to you. So I think what we're going to do in this game is we build the Cyclone and we're just going to keep it really simple. We're just going to send a single Reaper across to Scout. Keep building SCVs, get the Tech Lab started. And you meant to build a depot along with that star port. So this is a totally botched first game in terms of my build order execution. It is what it is. Alright. We've got the cyclone out now. So once you have a cyclone out, you can build a tech lab there. Start a raven and then start tank production. Luckily our command center finishing does get us out of the supply block. But it's still definitely uh, not the way we wanted it. Now what do we see guys? Reapers. Starport, factory, but notice the starport was building something add without an add-on. So he's probably got a drop coming in. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our cyclone there, patrolling the edge of the main, put that on our secondary key. Rest of our army at the front of the uh, natural. Command center has been I'll build a depot up there in case he drops on that side. It could be a liberator or something as well. Or who knows, maybe he's just going to swap it around and build some add-ons. But it's just one of those things you always want to keep an eye on. And, oh, hello. Guys, we're going to F2 to the front. A lot of Reaper Heli in there. So we're trying to F2 down to the front. We're going to drop an auto turret as well. He even brought an SCV in. And it looks like he's going to run away from the turret. So we're going to build another Raven, build another tank. We're going to send a Cyclone up to the high ground in case he jumps his Reapers in. We're building more SCVs right now. And I completely forgot my third gas as well. So this game is what I would refer to as an absolute disaster, guys. Cyclone is going to come back up there. Now, obviously, this is a new Cyclone. It can easily be killed by five Reapers if he just attacks it. But thankfully, my opponent's been a little slow on that. So, this is a good example of what happens if we fuck up a build. How do we stabilize? Well, we just had to micro. So what do we do? Macro cycle. Drop mules. Put on gases. LOL. Thank you so much for the tips, guys. Really appreciate the support. We're going to build an uh, extra Raven and tank here. And it looks like we will finally defend that. I keep F2ing from side to side because we haven't had time to uh, actually respond and kind of control group our units. So, guys, let's check. Macro cycles. Four SCVs plus mules. Build Marines. Build tank. 
We don't have money for the tanks. We're just waiting until I have the money for that. Now I can do other things. We can queue that to repair. Oh, actually, no, we, we should queue up a depot. End of the macro slack, we'll queue a depot as well. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, looks like we've got three tanks and two ravens. We can build a third one as well if we want, or we can just get our swap over. I think two ravens is perfectly fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to F2 to the front. We're going to control click the ravens, put them on the secondary key, click them on a tank to follow. And we're going to attack around the left side of this map to try and surprise our opponent. Now behind this, keep building SCVs and mules. Remember, this is not an all-in. Keep building marines, get stim, get a tank, get some vikings. Rally to the front, or the, maybe the ramp is fine. And then we can do everything else. Orbital, and then you want to go second and third barracks. These guys will get reactors. Cue them back there. This thing is still... Tanks are still getting blocked. It is what it is. We can scan the front and try to see what's going on. Now it looks like he is pretty well prepared, guys. So we can't move in tank range. So we've got to be very careful here. I did forget to make interference matrix, guys, which is obviously a disaster. And we're just going to siege our tanks here, okay? We're going to put a cyclone off to the right. Go home in macro. Build SCVs. Rally those ones there. Drop mules. I guess I can just lift that off and send it to the third straight away. Finish the macro cycle, guys. Build marines, build tanks, build vikings, okay? Bring that tank to the front. Keep building depots. And continue to build. Double engineering bay. Fourth and fifth barracks. Bruce can join Gary. Friends forever. Do a scan just to make sure we're not getting jumped on. These marines can go over there. Cyclone there. Has he got SCVs on this base? Oh, he does. And a mule. Okay, cool. Now, obviously, I don't want to hang here too long, guys. So we're going to unsiege. The general rule with a contain is once you've been at their side of the map for more than a few seconds or more than a minute, they're going to have a bigger army than you, even if they didn't at the start. And that's because you're not reinforcing. All right. So, guys, what do we got? SCVs, mules, marines, build reactors, tanks, and we're going to build some medevacs because I didn't build any of those yet. Um, and then depots, right? Last bit of the macro cycle. All right, this is a really good example of, like, a warm-up game. You're, like, half asleep. Your brain's not switched on. You're like, ugh. Now, in the previous episode, I showed how to swap the factory onto the add-on. We're not going to bother doing that this time. Just build the factory. We'll just build the tech lab on it. It's a pretty advanced maneuver. I showed you guys that as a maneuver you can do, but you don't need to obsess over doing it. Um, we can also mine these minerals open, and this is important to give us some more kind of freedom on what's going on. Now, I don't really see an army for him, but notice we're lacking on uh, vision right now, right? So that's definitely a big issue. You guys, I'm gonna so more SCVs, guys. More Marines, tanks, Vikings. We need lots of depots right now. You can see I'm a little bit supply blocked. Let's get the armory. The whole build has been pretty shitty so far. A move to the watchtower, deselect two Marines, remake the control group, and bring it back. Now, obviously, I don't have great vision, so let's just try and go turret there, turret there, in case he drops to the left. And I want to expand down here to the right. So rather than building turrets in my main, my whole philosophy here is just going to be add these guys to the control group, Viking to the separate control group. So Viking Ravens just follow a tank. Is I'd rather... Oh, hello. Let's just stim our whole army and aim it over there, guys. Siege a tank. Build turret. Almost got it. Let's go back to the front. All right. Let's grab these SCVs. Go those guys, send them over to the third. Let's build a fourth. Keep building these. Build a tech lab. Now, I don't need more workers, guys. Why? Because our bases are already full. Build gases there. We can build turrets on the edge so nothing can get past. Got some sensor towers. And we're good. I'm just going to put a few tanks around as well. Put one there. Dump it. That tank, dump it. Put another turret there. Perfect. Lower the depots, build a few more depots. Those should be the last ones we need. Build 2-2, two, two. build vehicle weapons. Lots of marines, tank, tank, viking, viking. Box the control group, shift one. Viking, shift two. We can also get three more barracks. Just to round out our marine production. And we 
we can see look he's taking the watchtower so if he's escalating the map control wars what can we do guys nothing left in that grab a medevac cluster. and a pack of marines send it over there and dump it off our key okay all right so now we've got marines tanks and vikings all building now we're going to stim these marines to take the watchtower Bring the Viking Raven back, guys. We don't want to lose those units. And he's coming forward here. So look at his army. What I'm looking for is the Viking count. Notice his Viking count smaller than mine, so I'm going to build Liberators. Drop a scan. Building more Marines behind this to finish maxing out. I'm going to siege the tanks. And now we're going to stim an attack move. We're going to try and chase him down if we can, because I think my army is bigger than his. So notice my marines are kind of trapped behind each other, so we're going to try and do it like that. Now, I'm fighting away from my tanks. This is a huge risk. I felt like I had a really good angle, but in hindsight, I didn't have 2-2 because my upgrades were late, so we have to pull back. Big mistake for me. Add the reactors. Hold the marine key down. Guys, you want to queue up so many marines in these scenarios. Build more tanks, build more vikings. I already queued up liberators. We're going to unseage those tanks, guys. Why are we on sieging? Because otherwise they would have friendly fired. You can see here, he actually gets some decent damage. We'll let him take control of the watchtower there. Actually, no, we won't. I think we can fight it. Boxing. This shift one. And the next thing you want to do is you want to keep controlling the skies. As long as I have more Vikings, we want to fight. If you have less Vikings, just keep building Vikings. Once you have more Vikings, you can build Liberators. Upgrade is ready for cool. use. Cool. All right, guys. So, let's grab about half of these workers, huh? send them down to the fourth, and let's take a fifth base. Okay. Break those rocks and then shift A move back up there. 3-3 three, three, plus two vehicle weapons. What are we missing? Well, what if he wins the air war? That's a big problem. So, you always want to build two star ports as the game goes on. All right, so we're going to put a marine on the watchtower. We're going to unsiege the tanks. We're just going to drop some scans, try and see what's going on. More tanks, more Vikings, and lots more Marines, guys. We're also going to put that rally point at the front. Okay, now what's interesting is I think that tank, those tanks are out on their own now. So we're just trying to scan everywhere to see where he's at. I only see a small army on the left, so we're distracting on the right with the Liberator. We're going to move over here and see if we can take this one out. Perfect. Siege the Liberator, dump it. And then we're going to stim and A move with everything else. And we're going to just siege all of our tanks here, guys, because they're in a pretty damn killer position. Kill that sensor tower because it was blocking my guys. If we can spread out a little bit, that'd be good. And is that a planetary? It is. So what do we do after a fight? We go, okay, are we in a good enough position now? Yes. Hold down the marine key. Look at how many marines we need. Tanks, vikings. Now that's only part of my expenditure right now, right? Because we've got these two. Add them to the control group. Two reactors. Box shift one. Box shift two. And we can also hold position with those marines or shift click the vikings. And then pull them back. Now I can also take a few of these tanks, guys. We can move them all in range of the planetary. That's going to be great. But don't reinforce this army because... The thing you should be expecting is a counterattack down the right. That's what we're worried about. Let's build another command center here. GG, well played. So that game was really messy at the start, but just using lots of scans for map control. Whenever your, your armies are facing off, don't drop any mules. Just all your scans are for map vision. You need to see where they are so you can pick Nothing where to fight. Um, this game was a massive mess in the early game, and it made the game much harder than it needed to be. Um, shout out to Magico for doing a big Reaper Hellion attack. He could have done a lot more damage, though, if he was more decisive. So that is the one thing that Magico kind of... I don't know if he was like, oh, Pig's trying to do an educational show, I'll be nice, or if he just kind of hesitated. But I think he basically could have wrecked me with that due to my opening being so so dodgy um but technically as long as you're building double tank you do add a few starports in the late game as well for more vikings and you just keep taking new bases this one i forgot to make into a planetary and i never really had the apm free to go and 
uh, put on gases, and it wasn't vital, right? It wasn't important. We were very busy fighting for this watchtower on this map. This watchtower is super important because it gives you so much map control. I noticed I had turrets on the left. We had sensor towers all around the map as well, but we probably could have put a few marine spotters out on this right. So I like to always expand in front of my main base. A lot of people, they do this. They go turret, 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 and then they go take this base. And it's like, well, why are you building turrets behind your base? You're better off, rather than building those turrets, like I said, just go take that base and build the turrets and the sensor towers in front of it, right? And then you've got upgraded. this flank is very dangerous for drops, so we've got multiple turrets there. And then down here, we don't want drops or liberators to get past. Cover your flanks from drops, and then you can focus all your forces in the center of the map. You're going to be much better off. Let's go back to the start and talk about the opening really quickly and remind ourselves, hey, Obviously, our hotkeys weren't correct at the start of that game. It really threw me off. And uh, everything was a little bit slow right from my very first deeper. You can see my first SCV started six seconds into the game. So I, I grabbed a different SCV to build the depot, but it still was a few seconds late, about three seconds. Important for you to review builds. There's so much new stuff you're learning. And just a reminder for anyone who's jumping in here, maybe they missed last week's episode. There's so many, such a big change from platinum and below only pick up one of these builds at a time. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm just going to watch the video and learn all three builds at once, but just pick up just the new TVT build and keep doing the Platinum TVP and TVZ until you get way more comfortable with this. Like, pick just one matchup to learn something new in at a time. Don't try to learn a new build for all three matchups or it's going to make your practice very stressful. And when you're learning, hop in an empty custom game. Practice a few games I against AI. I'm not, not going to do it during this show because it's boring to watch, but... That's what's going to make you improve massively faster. If you just spend five, a few five minute run throughs or 10 minute run throughs doing your build order and memorizing the order and the sequence of events, you're going to be way better off. So anyways, we go for a factory, we pull off gas. Notice we're missing a bit of SCV production. That's a mistake. One SCV, we like to scout around the left for very close proxies. And the Reaper likes to just check for Reaper proxies on the other side. Other than that, we build a second Reaper. And then we're going to go for a Hellion. Now, in the build last week, guys, we were going straight for two Cyclones off the factory. And uh, and then kind of going into the, uh, the, the the next bit of the build. Now, going for the two Cyclones does delay the starport a little bit. So I think I prefer this way of doing it, where we're going to do one Hellion and then a Cyclone. And that'll be a nice way of doing it. Uh, if you want, you could just go straight for Cyclones if you feel safer getting two Cyclones out every game. Um, totally up to you guys in that regard. But I think if I'd built my reactor on time, which was very, very late, and kept building Marines, I probably would have been okay either way. Now, I came in and I saw a Starport that was way later than mine. If I'd paid attention when I jumped in, I would have seen that the Starport just finished building. Whereas I'm already finished building the Starport, a Tech Lab, and something else. Which means he's committed to quite a few more units. And I don't actually see too many Reapers, so I didn't really see warning of the attack that was going to be incoming. Now, obviously we keep our units in a pretty safe position, but I move them down here, and I move my Cyclone up to the edge of my main, and this ends up being very rough. But let's be real, guys. It's 4 minutes 20. I think I could have more than two Marines out at this stage. So this is not the best setup for myself. We lose all those units, and if he continued in a little bit more aggressively... There's no reason for him to run away from the turret, for instance. I think he could have just literally killed everything I had here. Because five Reapers, two aliens beats the crap out of a Cyclone and two Marines. The Siege Tank would have saved the day, but I think he could have just hung around and been a little bit more of a bully with that. Now, if you're struggling against these guys, fix your build. Look at your build order and look for basics. And I can't iterate this enough times. Your barracks, the moment it finishes, needs to build a Reaper. That Reaper, if your barracks is on time, should be starting at a minute 26, a minute 27. But guess what? My depot was late. Fix the depot timing number one. Did the barracks start the second the depot finished? Let's see. Close enough. That was pretty good. Obviously, the SCV had to walk a second. But the moment the barracks is finished, did we start a Reaper? Let's take a look. Ah, a little bit of a delay there. About one second delay there. Could have probably built that just slightly faster. Now, what about when the Reaper's finished? Do we immediately start the second Reaper? Yes, no downtime. That's really good. What about when the second Reaper pops out? Do we immediately build the reactor? You can count the seconds. That's about five seconds there. Okay, but as long as the reactor finishes and we start building Marines straight away, it'll be fine, right? Reactor finishes 318, just as it ticked over to 319. 
Marine production starts. And we're supply blocked. So that's, we, we're already two Marines behind from being late on the Marine production and about two Marines behind from the, the previous mistakes before that. So you can imagine if I have four more Marines when this push comes in, it's much easier to defend. And that's something you can kind of keep in mind. So you got to remember, check all of those little basic things in the early game and make sure you're tight there. If your build order is loose and you fuck up your early game, don't be drawing conclusions about, oh man, I can't stop Reaper Hellion or something like this. Don't get me wrong, you can build a bunker with this build if you find it just makes you feel safer. We can squeeze a bunker in probably three minutes, I think is when you'd probably want to start a bunker with this build if you feel you need to, but um, probably not 100% necessary. In mid game, bio, TVT, what production do you want? 8, 2, 1, or even 8, 2, 3. So we've had a question, what production do you want in the mid game? So notice we, here's our standard transition, right? That gets us up to five barracks, that sort of stuff and then a second factory. Now, eventually, we want to go fourth command center, then three more barracks, and then two more starports. So that'll bring us up to eight barracks. So we're on five barracks, two factories, right? But then fourth command center, then we can go three more barracks, two more starports. You generally, to support all these barracks and starports, you do need to like keep expanding quite a lot. And that's why I've got this note where I've said, look, if you're happy playing a longer game, you really like big macro games, you can focus on this. But if instead you never add this command center or at least the production, maybe you add the command center, but you're more focused on just two factory, five racks, lots of production, lots of focusing on engagements and pushing your opponent and taking good fights, that as the main priority is gonna be an easier path to immediate improvement and winning. Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? We are going to be going into a Terran versus, uh, Terran versus Zerg here, versus Maison, who I've actually played recently in the uh, the weekly tournament and did some very nice cheesy openings, but uh, we'll see what happens. Um, Depot first on that ramp using our first SCV that pops out. This is Equilibrium. It's a rather large map. What's going on? Let's double those, those workers up on those close patches if you can, guys. You can see... This patch, this patch, this patch, this patch, all very nicely doubled up now. Make sure we have that extra SCV queued, and let's go straight for this barracks. Now, technically, you can actually get this barracks started a second earlier if you bring a different SCV to build it. So if you guys are ever like, I want to hit the fastest possible Reaper harassment or something like that, um, you could actually bring a different SCV. Because the first SCV takes a second to get off the depot, that's the reason why that's the case. Now... Keep in mind, guys, we use the Barracks SCV to scout in this matchup to see if it's hatchery first or not. And we rally to gas, we put one on gas, and then we rally that guy to the inside of the gas. Now, if you don't bother rallying him to the inside, don't worry, that's a super advanced thing. But just showing you guys now, because why not? Uh, third base there. Oh, do we want to go third base there? Because So the, the, the weird thing on this map, guys, is there's a gold base down here. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking maybe we want to take advantage of that, but no, I don't think we're going to. Third base there, and then probably fourth base either at the top or on the gold, depending on what's happening. Oh, I forgot to send my SCV down on time, guys. Remember, the first SCV has gone to scout. So this command center is a few seconds late. Three, four, that'll be my fifth. Okay, there we go. Bringing your SCV to build the depot. And then remember, this is Gary, guys. Remember, Gary builds the depot. He then builds the factory. He does everything. We're going to start a marine after this uh, reaper. We can move that out to the left of our base and patrol the edge. Remember, we aren't going to go for a second gas. And, oh, hello. Was that full first, guys? Mm, it's finished soon after the reaper popped out, so I'm going to assume that's hatchery first, even though I should have been looking at it the moment it finished. If lings arrive in my natural, I will feel regret. Let's get a factory and a reactor on the way. Patrol that marine. Build another STV, and that's micro the Reaper. So you want to drop a grenade. Try to kill the drone if you can, guys. Trying to just do very slow clicks. Trying not to micro crazy fast. Now, he had three lava on that base. So we're just going to scout the main and then leave. Let's go home. Start a third command center, okay? Add to the hotkey. What are, we, what are we looking at here? The reason I circled is because them having so much lava is very unusual, guys. So we're going to go check his gold base. Add on complete. For now, 
Keep building SCVs, drop a mule, cancel that SCV, build an orbital. Let's lift this off, lift the factory off, put that there, build the starport. Remember it's starport and second gas, same time. Now we could go tech lab here, but it's much more important to get your first two Hellions started, preferably before 3 minutes 20. Okay, so he did go for a very quick third base. Our Reaper's just going to come back and join up with our Hellions now, guys. Let's put two guys on gas, and let's rally upgraded. to the natural. So we're building SCVs two at a time. We're going to build a tech lab now, which, to be fair, that does kind of delay the Liberator, but that's okay. We're already rallying that Liberator to a nice position and building more Hellions. So the two Hellions and the Reaper are going to go across the map. They'll clear the Watchtower and then he moved to outside their base. Bit of a staging point. We're going to build a Liberator. A few more SCVs here. And we can get one Depot started. You don't really need it till about 50 supply, but I'm just going to start it early to make sure I don't forget, okay? Going to make an Orbital now. Make a few more Marines as well as Stim. A few more SCVs. Drop another Mule. Preferably, you don't want to drop it on a place that already has a patch, but that's okay. Now, we want to build two more Hellions to get up to that magic count of six. And we're just driving around. We don't want to run past the Queens, but we can click on that drone there. And you can also click on the Lava, or you can even shift click them, like that. Because Lava don't have that much uh, hit points yet, whereas the Eggs do. Keep building SCVs while we look at this. And let's bring these guys back to the middle. Put another Depot. And let's go reactor, lift that off, build a new reactor. Barracks is there, ready to swap on. And then we What's can also go on? double engineering bay. Alright uh, guys, aliens, add to the hotkey, move to the staging point, liberator in the back is going to come in, siege up on the base, and then the aliens will dive. While we're doing that, queue up extra SCVs because we're going to be busy microing. Go to depot. Control click some structures, and alright, let's micro. So the Liberator's being a dickhead. We want to run in on the opposite side, the third base. Oh, the Hellions run in the wrong direction, like dumbasses. Queue up a few more SCVs here, guys, and we're just going to micro these Hellions. Now, there's nothing much to kill here. We're just going to A-move. And we're going to run these Hellions away, because there was too many Queens there blocking me. So let's go home. First thing you do, make sure SCVs and Mules are going. They are. Then Marines, Widow Mines, and then Medivacs. Except, guess what? We don't have the reactor yet. So let's go swap those over. Then build the Marines, get the combat shields, get plus one one. And let's get double gas. And ooh, it is actually non-stop depot time. So Gary and Bruce are going to build the last two depots. And then they'll move up in there and build more. And it's a good idea to keep your Hellions alive, guys. Makes it much easier to defend like a third base or anything like that. So just by hanging out here on the Watchtower... Makes my life a bit nicer. I'm going to pull back and notice that third base. Very, very heavily saturated. So let's grab about 10 workers, send them to the third. Remember what we said, deselect the floating command center and rally there. And a macro cycle. SCVs, build marines, build widow mines and medevacs. That reactor is about to finish, so we could do that. Let's lower these depots and we can rally right there. And now we need 4th and 5th barracks, we're a little slow on that. Keep building depots, and I think we can also just go straight to 8 barracks. And we're going to go for tech labs on those to make marauders. Now, with this play, we don't actually need gases on the 3rd, so we're just going to build our last 3 or 4 workers for that base. And otherwise, all we're doing is building marines, marauders, get concussive, build widow mines. We can actually F2 our army even if we want here. Research complete. And we're going to send out a Marine to the tower, a Marine down there, a Marine there, a Marine there, a Marine there. So we sent a bunch of Marine spotters out. And now we can just kind of build these depots here. Replace those guys. Add these to our barracks hotkey. Marauder, Marauder. Lots of Marines, lots of Widow Mines, lots of Medivacs. These two here have to build reactors. And those three tech labs, okay? Now, if we can harass, that would be great. So let's try and harass. Oh! Stim our whole army back. Upgrade complete. So if you're ever under attack like that, just click them in a pocket, and all the SCVs will basically naturally hide themselves. You see he's trying to run south, so we cut off his retreat there. Alright. Now, I never made the armory. That's a mistake. Three tech labs. Marauder. Lots of marines. 
Okay, guys, let's build that and that. Add on complete. Chase those guys down. And let's go. Lots of marines there. Okay, and now we've got it. Lots of marauders coming in. Lots of widow mines. We've completely mined out a mineral field. Grab a few SCVs from the main, put them there. Last couple mules. And widow mines and medevacs. Alright, guys, let's start parade pushing. Now remember, it's always better if we do drops as well. So we're gonna put that in the back up there. Micro it whenever we have the time. We're gonna push towards this gold base. So let's morph Hellbats. Let's spread Widow Mines. I don't know where my bio army is. Apparently it doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm like, where's the bio? We can't just push with Widow Mines. Nothing left in that mineral cluster. We can start 2-2 and an armor upgrade, by the way. Ah, okay. We're gonna set the rally points, guys. Okay. Here we go. Pre-spread, pre-spread, pre-spread. The drop is just gonna come down here. More marauders, more marines, more widow mines. So we just grab the widow mines and just spread them. Grab the bio, spread it. Uh, drop there. We tried to send him to distract guys. We're going to pick it up and tell it to unload up here on the high ground. It's, it's dead at this point. Just ignore it. These guys are just going to try to pick off some creep tumors. That's the whole goal here. Lots of marauders, lots of marines, lots of widow mines, lots of medevacs. Go back to the rally point, guys. Shift across the map. So we're going to stim that army, guys. If you can spread it out a little bit, that's great as well. Stim these guys forward. Notice we're only manually stimming small sections of units. And he is mining on this gold. Oh, I didn't think he was mining. That's why I didn't run in there yet. But obviously, that's very high priority to get rid of that. So these guys can pick up at any moment if they get in trouble. Now we want more marauders, more marines, more widow mines, more medevacs. So we're going to grab these Widow Mines in the back. Remember to bring the Widow Mines forward, guys. So we're just using Shift there as much as we can. Scan to make sure there's no Hive. There's not. That's just a... Oh, no, that's a Hive. So pick up, save some of these units. Upgrade is ready for use. I'm going to stem these guys in. That's a Changeling, right? No, it's not. These guys are going to go in. Those guys came in from that side. Remember to just F2 stim everything? I haven't been remembering to do that. Kill that creep shamer. That thing's annoying me. Upgrade complete. Try and get rid of this creep on the right as well a little bit. Unload that medevac. Let's get 3-3. And guys, let's build a fourth and a fifth base, okay? More marauders, more marines, more widow mines. We're going to pick up and drop in the main. The rest of our army here. Using box shift to select it all. We're now going to do what I call a YOLO, guys. We're going to do some stutter step. But pick up micro. Remember we were talking about this? Just pick up the... There was banelings on top of me. There we go. These guys, stim into the main mineral line. More marauders, more, more marines. Try and stutter step in there. So just click on the drones, guys. I'm just manually clicking them. I find shift clicking can derp out in these scenarios a bit. We're just going to tell that to unload behind the natural just to cause more problems. Actually, but look, he's following me. So just do the juke. Go back in the same direction. These guys are now going to go south while this new army arrives at that widow mine point. Okay. So once again, guys, bump up and then just pick up. And we just boost over there and drop in that base. Okay. These guys are already killing stuff. Just stim them. As long as our new army doesn't, like, headbutt into them, we should be okay. I think we can stim and stutter step this. So we're going to just A move, stutter step, A move, stutter step, A move, stutter step. So right click, A move, right click, A move there. GG, well played. So what's such a big difference here from our games last week is we didn't stop to expand. And I'm still playing at what I feel feels like a pretty slow pace for me. But... What's so different is by not taking the time to take a fourth and fifth, even though my income's dropping, right, guys? Like, this base is friggin' way oversaturated. I've got 15 workers on three mineral patches. Like, it's 
It's not ideal, right? Uh, my natural's getting oversaturated. Like, I'm not dropping any mules as well. My income's not great. But we're focusing on getting that forward position and removing the Zerg's map control. And that's very important. Because as long as we've got spotters out there to not get run by, we're on the front, we're dropping in the back with one or two medevacs while methodically marching our parade forward. And we're just forcing them to fight into kind of awkward and bad situations. So that's what's going to give us good trades. That's what gives us this unit's loss tab. Whereas if we sit back, it doesn't matter if we take a bunch of expansions because then we allow the Zerg to go first. And by the time we move out, there's creep three quarters of the way across the map. This base gets killed by Banelings. We go, ah, oh, we get up there with our army to defend, but it's already dead. And then another bunch of Lings come in and kill this base while it's building. And suddenly things start to become much harder. The Zerg's at 90 drones and can support, you know, this immense army. And things get really out of hand. Now, to be fair, I don't know if Mazon macroed all that well this game. Actually, no, he had 70 drones pretty early and a very quick hive. So not a, not a bad, not a bad play, it feels like. That being said, it is nine minutes in the game. Mazon's not really a macro player, so there is that. I think the Liberator did a lot of damage. Good queen movement. But he was already very low on drones at this point. Yeah, he was already in a pretty rough position. So this got me nicely ahead. I think it's a good thing to show the aliens going in, getting some damage, but not necessarily fully committing. Just go in, micro them for 10, 15 seconds, and then pull them out. It's probably the best, most reliable way to do this as well. So I think that's going to be a really nice way to do it rather than throwing them away every game. Um, it was funny. There was quite a few fights there where normally what we do is I'd select the whole army and press stim as our kind of low APM way of microing a pre-spread of units, right? You'll notice there was a few times I was doing a more advanced technique where because I just control grouped an army at home, added it to my army, I didn't want to stim it. It wouldn't have been the worst thing if I stimmed it. It's really not the end of the world. There was a few times where instead I would go box, shift, box, shift, box to select multiple units and then I would press stim. But that's pretty hard to do on the fly. So I think it's better for you guys generally. Just select the army key, press stim. It's going to be a nice way of doing it. Now this drop actually really distracted him there. Didn't really do any direct damage, but it's not about that. It's about clearing the creep, getting a good setup, trying to create that kind of undefeatable position on the Zerg side of the map as early as possible. And this is really nice because remember from last week, we're already learning a three command center opening. We're learning how to use Hellions. This is such a big step up from Platinum League and Diamond is a big step up. Don't get me wrong, Diamond 3 is pretty much the same as Platinum League. And you can absolutely get through Diamond 3 just doing Platinum builds. But then Diamond 2 is a big step up. Diamond 1 is a big step up. Each tier in Diamond League is just as big as all of gold and, and half of Platinum combined, you know. All of silver and gold combined, that sort of thing. So it becomes harder and harder to get those immediate reinforcements of like, oh, I got promoted, yay! It just doesn't happen as often simply because there is such a broad amount of MMR and skill in that range. All oh, right, all right, all right. Next game's a Protoss, guys. We're playing against Poglet. P -p -p Poggers. Bad news. Um, so this is a TVP. Now, what is the big change in TVP? Nothing from last week. There is already so much to learn there. We just want to try and be really organized on our barracks timing and we want to keep improving that and talking about refining our build because this is going to be a process you know i'm going to be actively kind of talking about where do we focus when do we focus on our harassment um we also need to start doing things like hey if i'm going to go in for some harassment queue up more workers we did it in that last game that terran versus zerg right where i queued up a lot more workers as I was going in with the Hellion Lib pressure, because I knew that could turn into 30 or 40 seconds of micro, depending on the situation. That might have been, you know, a crazy amount of, of uh, micro. Sorry, guys, a little bit slow on the gas mining there. It's going to slow down uh, my Reaper, which is not great. You do really want to make sure you're tight in the opening for exactly the reasons I was talking about earlier. I want to attack that probe as well. Ha ha, you can't leave. So we send this guy here, and he's going to try and block my expansion. So what you want to do is you want to cut off the inside of the circle, guys. You know how he's going to circle to try and block you? Cut off the inside. You should be good. 
All right, build the command center. This guy can go up here and build that. We can send the Reaper across the map. And it looks like a normal build. We've seen a Nexus, so we can send that guy home. Build our CV, drop mule. Remember the moment we do that, we want to start the depot, the Marine. And we know there's going to be another Marine as well, remember, right? Now we're going to build another SCV. We want to get factory going up next. Build another Marine. Our Reaper, we're just going to click up near the mineral line. Try not to micro that just yet. We need to get the depot started. Send this SCV home. Second gas started. And now we can look at the Reaper. But while we're doing it, we're queuing up two SCVs, okay? Try and target that yellow at point one that comes out of the gas. We see a Stalker, so run away. And that was... Was that a gateway or a Stargate? Jeez, I should have clicked on that. That's really lazy to not click on the tech structure, guys. We can build a reactor now at home. Put two What's workers on gas. Keep building SCVs. These two SCVs, just make sure they're both queued onto the minerals there. SCV ready. And we want to go straight for a Cyclone and a Medivac, right? So yep. Starport's the first thing. And then Cyclone right after we start the Starport. SCV ready. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys, let's double check if it's a Stargate or if that was just a gateway we saw. Even if we lose the Reaper, it's okay to sacrifice it at this point. And it was two, stalk two gate Stalker and now a Robo. Okay, so we're just going to try to scout with the Reaper, run it home. Behind, we can rally back to our natural, do our first macro cycle there, build a few Marines, and build a another Cyclone. Now, he's building a lot of Stalkers, so he'll be very safe first, this two gate and a Robo. If we were being super smart, we would be like, well, we don't need to commit to the pressure. When you're first learning a build, it's better to just commit to the build. Commit to the attack and focus on the macro behind it. And we didn't really do that that much last week. There were times where we kind of backed out of it. So I, I want to kind of take a step back and just say, let's focus on the basics again. Let's headbutt with that attack. Let's let's friggin' just YOLO it across the map, okay? So we're going to go across the map to about here, rally everything over there. Let's build two tech labs. Let's get two more barracks here. Okay, I can build another depot. Lots of SCVs. And we just killed something out there. So I'm F2ing. Everything else can rally at home. We can get an engineering bay. And remember what? We want to get these guys. They're going to go drop in the main. And the Marines are going to aim over the front of the natural. Okay. So we're going to macro right now while that's going in. We're going to build a raven and a tank before swapping these barracks over. And now we're going to micro for at least 30 seconds. Now, guys, let's just leave. Why? Because that's not getting damage. We're going to click these guys in, but there's a battery, so we're going to run away. So I headbutted, even though I knew he'd be well defended. We're now going to just run home and macro. Build more SCVs. Build double gas. Build two Marines. Get these barracks ready to swap over. We want fourth and fifth barracks building. Did I get the engineering bay? Yeah, there it is. I was like, where's my upgrade? Lift these off. Put the barracks down. Shift click the factory and the reactor. Tab, reactor, reactor. And this landed the barracks. Immediately lift it. Let's get stim. Lots of marines right now, guys. We're very low on gas, so I can't afford all my upgrades. Put guys on there. Do a supply drop. And Gary and Bruce can be non-stop building depots. Now, I've been kind of building depots one at a time in all these spotting locations. Which is also a bit complicated. So I think the next game, we're going to simplify it. Just build them all in one location with Gary from start to finish. Just to make this a bit easier to not screw up the build, okay? Now we're going to oh, stop building yeah. SCVs because we're at 50 and that's more than I need, guys. Uh, more... Thank you so much for the tip and helping continue Bronze to GM, my friend. Thank you very much. So guys, more Marauders, more Marines, more Widow Mines, more uh, Medivacs. And just keep building these depots, okay? So last couple of scan of mules there. Now, remember, if they have uh, an observer, you can hunt around. And we saw this guy open Robo first, right? So there's a good chance there's an observer. So if you send like Cyclones and the Raven around, that's a good idea. If he had Blink or Phoenix, this would be a very dangerous move. We're just checking we're not being spied on. And then Marine, Marauder, Marauder, Marine, 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 Widow Mine, Widow Mine, Medivac. And we want to make sure we set the rally point to the front. I keep forgetting to do that. And that's really causing me to have to go back and grab units from my production. And it's messing everything up. 
Uh, go to Streamrise. Are you okay, guys? A Russian stream boosting site. Definitely go and support them. Except, yeah, we can we can remove that message. I think the mods were leaving it there because it's funny. Um, more Marauders, more Marines, more Widow Mines, more Medivacs, more Depots. Let's go, guys. F2. If if you haven't already control grouped, F2. Get the Raven on a different key, and let's go. So we're gonna send a Marine there, a Marine there. Oh, hello. Okay, guys. So we're gonna stim and a move. We're gonna scan this army. The Raven here. Now, I, I hate to say it, guys, but he's just caught with his pants down. So we're just gonna move on top. You see how small that army is? And that's just gonna be game. So while we're moving across, scan, to look ahead of my army to see what we're going into. Build more Marines, Marauders, Widow Mines. Stay your re Burrow, burrow. Does he not have a third? He does. So if we want to be careful, we can split our army up here and then just send a few units into the third base. Keep pulling these guys back. Move the tank forward over on the right side so it reaches across the gap. These guys are killing that and he kind of has to do something about this. You can obviously put auto turrets down as well. More Marauders, more Marines, more Widow Mines, more Medivacs. You can use the anti-armor missile. We don't have Interference Matrix available with this build, guys. But you can just use the Raven for anti-armor missiles, auto turrets, that sort of stuff. We accidentally clicked on our Medivac there when we were trying to start a step back. That's all right. If you've got overwhelming numbers, there's no need to dilly-dally. You can just push in for the win. Nice. All right, so like I said, guys, I think a few simple, simple factors we can do to make this easier. Depots. So remember, Gary builds the starport. This is Gary, but I forgot about Gary. Because what did I do, guys? I, I send him back to just mine, right? Look at this. I just send him to mine. It always times out where Gary is an absolute legend. Remember, right from the start, this Gary does everything. So you get the command center. Gary was usually the same SCV that helped defend from the probe. He actually killed this probe in the early game. He then builds a depot. Okay, actually in this matchup, that's not Gary. Because you want the factory to start earlier. The reason we start this factory later versus Zerg in the previous game is because you don't need the factory until the reactor's ready and the reactor's a little later. So you can wait for that SCV to finish the depot, build the factory, it'll still be ready to swap over. But in this matchup, we want to start building the starport earlier, the cyclone earlier, because we're not doing that fast third command center. So this is actually Gary over here. But notice I've queued him back to minerals. That's not what he should do. He should be queuing to build the starport. So he should be queued here already. We should be like, oi, queue up, fucking shift click there. And then from the starport, he, he should be queued up here to start building depots in a grid. Because look, you want to start depots about 37, 38 supply. And that's exactly when the starport finishes. So that's why that's something you can just remember with any standard 111 build like this, any double gas build as opposed to the third command center, build the factory, build the starport and start building depots all game. Whereas I was like, oh, I'll build spotting depots in these positions, but this is way more APM and attention required. And you'll see Maru and pros do this. You'll see Clem do this. They, they never have a Gary. They never have a depot builder. I see players all the way to GM have so much success though by just having Gary and Bruce, the depot builders. It makes such a big difference. So I really think that helps out. Now, remember what I said, guys. I saw two gateways, a bunch of stalkers and a robo, and I figured this guy's going to have a ton of defense. I'm not going to be able to do damage, but I still moved across. Why? Because if you try to then go, okay, um, I'll change my build um, on the fly, you're going to execute way worse. Once you've got 100 games with this build, you can learn a little adjustment where you leave your Marines at home and you only poke with the Cyclone drop because it's a bit safer or something like that. But you need so many games before you can start making those fine-tuned adjustments, you know? Basically, the problem most StarCraft players have is they start trying to run before they even know how to walk. And that's a perfect example of it, where you're just like, lol, I could just do this. So check this. The Marines go in. When I saw the battery, I knew I wasn't going to be able to overpower. Maybe would have killed two probes. And I just clicked everything home. Full focus on macro. 
So the second and third barracks, you always want to swap on these tech labs. They build themselves new reactors. You want a fourth and fifth barracks nice and early. Plus one weapons. And we're always going to push one tank, one raven, and just stim shields, plus one, lots of bio, medevac mine, and go for the win. And it was pretty easy because he didn't take a third. He didn't go for splash damage. Immortal sentry store, because none of these units are going to scale very well. So when all of our upgrades finished, we just had a much more powerful army. And he was on my side of the map, which made it worse. Oh, yeah. Do you have any advice if I see my mechanics and macro are holding me back in the mid-game? Just build systems, right? So mechanics and macro, um, it's not necessarily something where people go, oh, I have bad Come mechanics. I'm, I'm a bad micro player. I just will never be good at micro. I'm bad at macro. I'm just not fast enough to macro. But I know players with like 100 APM who macro so friggin' well. Like there are GM players. Like you guys see me cast, I'm like, oh, this is probably like low diamond plat. These guys are 120 APM. And then like six, seven minutes in, I'm like, oh, this is actually a GM player with 120 APM. Because what they're doing is just very logical and makes sense. So in terms of, you know, what can you do if your mechanics hold you back? You can simplify your game plan. Uh, just do a two base push makes it easier and, and just build systems. So what was I doing just then? I was going, why go back to build depots every time with different SCVs in different places? Build the depots all in one spot. That's easier to do. Number one. Um, uh, number two, always batch things up. If you struggle to do the add-on swap there, then either you need to do a li little, little bit less uh, attention on the micro of the harassment, or you need to just focus on the harassment. But when you come home, bam, build all four barracks at once, right? Something like that. Rather than building two barracks, an engineering bay, two gases, two barracks, you can simplify the build order. Or you can just get more methodical with it, right? Um, you can memorize the order of things. Um, people will say like, oh, I have bad macro. But what they'll do is they'll go in micro for 30 seconds and they'll already have a thousand minerals when they started microing. And I'll say, wait a second, what the fuck are you doing? What's a rule? A, a rule is before you go in for the micro situation, queue up SCVs, drop mules, build, do a full macro cycle. SCVs, mules, build marines, build tanks, build medevacs, build depots. You do all that, you queue up extra of those units as well. You spend all the money you have, queue up four SCVs on each command center, three, three or four, queue up four marines on each barracks. Then you micro for 30 seconds, you go home, it's a completely different level of miss macro where it's like, oh, I didn't macro for 30 seconds, got a thousand minerals, but I queue up, do a macro cycle, I spend my money, right? It's all good. As opposed to going home, you got 2000 minerals, you've been supply blocked the whole time and everything's an effing disaster. Are there any good sites with build order? Says Oscar F. Arawi. Uh, for different build orders, I know Spawning Tool was a resource people used a lot. Zerg used all... SC Swarm was a website people used to use. I haven't really been looking up build websites in quite a while, so I think you'd need to ask around in my Discord and just be like, hey guys, any, any good build resources? I think a lot of people mostly just go off YouTube videos and just write down their own builds. These days, there aren't as many people like constantly writing things up, but also if you go on the subreddits, like all thing, Reddit, all things Zerg, Reddit, all things Protoss, Reddit, all things Terran, um, those could all potentially be good places. Is it possible to change the order of the units when you tab in a group? Put the marine first and the raven second. Uh, no, I'm not sure how it orders it. That's why I try to always put the raven on a different key, Saint. I try not to put that on the same army key. It makes it much easier. And I just have it right-clicked on one of my units to follow. Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? It's time for another TVT. I think this is the matchup that's quite intimidating with the build I've been teaching. So I want you all to remember... <clears throat> that when you're learning this build, the main thing is just getting the early game down. Our first game today was a disaster of an opening. So let's really improve that and let's benchmark. Uh, please call me out in Twitch chat, those watching live. Remind me to What's benchmark the Raven tank timing. So when I get my, my Ravens and tanks and attack my opponent's base with it, what time do I manage to hit with that? Let's get the barracks going there. I accidentally control group the depot as well. Let's fix that. Keep building those. Rally the next SCV to the second gas, guys. So it's 16 barracks, 16 gas, 17 second gas. I'm going to rally those guys to the inside because I like to do that. Rally the next SCV onto this gas. There's a real nice rhythm with rallying your workers. And you always need to pull one worker off minerals and one off the command center onto each gas. So we do the first gas. See, there we go. Nicely saturated. Queue up one more SCV to 19. And then once again, pull one off minerals plus one from the command center. Isn't that nice? There's something beautiful about that opening. Third base there, fourth base there. Remember, I like to expand in front of my expansion, guys. And we'll go for Orbital and Reaper. 
That Reaper started at a minute 28. Not too bad. Next up, What's as we're going to pull off gas just before 100 yes, gas to start the factory. Alone. There we go. Factory goes down. Pull another one off to build the depot and then go for the command center. And pull one more off just to get a little bit more minerals so we can get that command center earlier rather than later. We're going to try and get another uh, Reaper going as well as a SCV. Do another SCV up as well. All right, guys, watch the Reaper as it comes out. You always want to look around because this is the common proxy Reaper location. So you check down here and then you just go back into your base and just keep them in a nice safe position where you can't be surprised. Keep building SCVs. And we want to get that command center up. Should be right around 2 minutes 20. Add to control group, send to the camera location. Get the Hellion. Remember, once the command center goes down, guys, we want to go straight for guys back on gas. And we want to get the starport going. Now, I'm prioritizing the starport over the reactor, but they're basically about the same time. So whatever works for you. Keep building SCVs. And remember, what pairs up with the starport? The depot. And in this matchup, I think it's very important to scout the edge of your main. Because we're playing Terran players and we know how friggin' annoying they are with their drops, right? You should know, considering we are one. Just doubling that worker up on that patch, because why not? And we're just chilling defensively. We've got the Cyclone building now. And remember, it's going to be Tech Lab, Tech Lab after that. Now, you can use the Starport worker to go build the gas on the natural. We're not going to forget that this time. It's going to make our opening so much nicer. A couple more Marines are on the way. Now, notice we're not scouting in this matchup. If you guys prefer to scout every game, we don't need to check for proxies as much if we do that. It's just a choice. Um, if you if you prefer to do that, go for it. These two guys can go on to gas. Just make sure that's saturated straight away so we don't forget it. And get a raven started. And we're just keeping out all of our units together. And I think this is better because if they surprise us at the front and our units are split like that other TVT, things can get nasty. But I personally, in my own play, I'll just adjust this based on what's happening on the ladder. So if I keep getting dropped, I like to leave my cyclone on the edge to intercept the drop. If I keep getting jumped on the front, I might leave my whole army just ready on the front to defend. And that's just kind of the natural flow of adapting based on the meta, based on what's happening a lot on the ladder. And it's something you naturally want to be doing as a StarCraft player. All right, guys, check it out. All right, we're going to try and... Defend here. We're just A moving right now. We'll drop an auto turret. Bring some more marines down. Do we have enough? Oh, there's a liberator in the main. Ow, 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 ow. Keep, keep box click, box click, box click. All right. We're going to move these guys out. I will build another tank. More marines. Keep building SCVs, guys. Dropping mules. And then the marines can get underneath. These SCVs here. And then press the return cargo button at the end of that. After telling them where to go. Alright, so we've got two ravens, guys. We can swap these around. Now, because of that damage... I do wonder... Hmm, if that liberator is going to come back in. Let's build some vikings. Keep building tanks. I'd say tanks are the most important thing, right? When that third tank comes out, that's our push timing. F2. Take the ravens, steal them onto the other control group. Build another Viking. Keep building depots here. And uh, let's rally this base back here since the base is undersaturated. Drop a few more mules. Okay. So good attack from my opponent, guys. We can start stim there. Keep building SCVs. Build another depot. Normally we'd have a third command center started by now, but we haven't this time. And that's okay. All right, third tank is here. We're going to move across this map. Ravens, Vikings and tanks the add the viking to the key Boy. add the marine to the key and we're actually going to rally across the map just for a little bit we don't like to do this for too long actually we're not we're just rally at home rallying across the map is a big commitment i think that's a bad habit to fall into build a third command center rally back to the natural keep building units but just keep them at home for now all right guys let's send our viking and ravens ahead Alright, what do we got? Now he's in a pretty good position. I forgot to make interference matrix, guys. We've just realized that. Oh, I didn't realize I'd be going in vision there. That's a bummer. So we're going to attack, drop some auto turrets. 
Let's see how this goes. Might go well, might not. It's always better to initiate a fight and just go first. And as long as we kill the ravens and keep ours alive, this is very successful. Awesome. Now, if you're really greedy, you can try to move forward there the moment that scan runs out for him. That would be a bit of a crazy move. So we're just going to run home now. Put more SCVs. One, two, three, four. And two engineering bays. Keep building SCVs and dropping meals. Change that rally point back there. Control click the engineering bays. Hotkey them. Control click the barracks. Hotkey them. Build two medevacs. Build a tank. Build combat shields. We are missing a fourth gas. Apparently I misclicked that rally point. Let's put guys on gas straight away. Let's make an orbital. Alright. So we definitely could have queued up macro before we went in for the fight, right guys? I was kind of mentally torn between instructing you guys on just setting up a contain and going for the attack. And I struggled to make a decision, which... It's normally bad as a StarCraft player, but as an instructor, that's even worse. Because I'm like, which one am I going to teach them? And I'm like, oh, which one? Which one's more stable? Which one's going to give them better long-term learning? And I'm sitting there and I'm freaking out and I'm kind of going, Ugh. and because of that, I forgot to queue up macro. Whereas normally, as your army gets to halfway across the map, you should be queuing up extra SCVs, extra units. I didn't do that. That's why I floated 1,500 minerals. 1,500 minerals, which is astoundingly bad. So definitely a big mistake. Now here's a cute tip, guys. Build some spotting depots, and you can um you can kind of spot incoming drops ahead of time. It's really nice to kind of see if your opponent's trying to surprise you at all. Let's build lots of SCVs, lots of mules. Grab a few SCVs off that base as well. Lots of marines, tanks, and we're very low on vision right now. So let's try and get some marines out, shall we? We're gonna send a marine there, a marine there, and a marine there. And we've got Bruce joining Gary in a moment. Add on complete. We'll get a second factory in a little bit as well. Leave lots of space around factories so your tanks can get in and out. Add these units to our control group. And we do need to send more marines out. Guys, my main base. Oh god, my main base. Okay, so he's going to drop my main base. Now, because I can't get there in time to stop it, we want to pull the SCVs away. We want to lower our depots and we want to figure out how do you defend this. So first things first. We need to move our tanks over and stabilize, okay? So we're going to siege, not in range of his tanks, but just in range here. The next thing we want to do is keep building units. More marines, more tanks, more vikings, okay? We're also going to build one, two, three, four, because I'm kind of accepting my barracks are almost all going to die. We're now going to take all of these tanks, and we're going to try and move around through this mineral line and slowly siege him off. I'm also going to move all my marines to the low ground in case he goes there. Oh no! That was a mistake. Alright, this, this command center is kind of blocking me. Really nice moves by Iceman, guys. I'm going to drop an anti-armor missile on him. Oh, he's trying to pick up right now, so let's drop some turrets to just clear this. Probably the easiest way. Alright guys, we're going to F2, A move down there. We're going to control click the siege tanks, unsiege them, and bring them down. Now, I think we have enough units, so we're just going to stim and A move this, guys. Let's go home. 2 2 upgrades. Control click idle workers. Back on gas, back on minerals. We build barracks. Got more marines here. I'm just going to be building marines even without add ons, guys. And now, my instincts always say in this scenario, he's going to attack the right side. So we're going to attack there with a marine, attack there, attack there, attack there, attack up there, and get back to a central location. Let's go back to building some depots over there as well. And let's also build a fourth base, just because I'm floating money like a mother trucker. That was a really good doom drop by him. Very hard to stop. It did some nice damage. Fourth. I never built turrets on the right, so I'll build those now. Okay, guys, did we get combat shields? Yes. Build some marines, build some tanks, build some vikings. Do we still have medevacs? We do. What's our work account? 62. I never took these gases. Let's take those. And remember, guys, we're low on APM. We're behind the curve, so we're just immediately plopping guys down. No Fs given. Drop some mules to make up the money. And we'll rally to this Nothing fourth in a moment in as well. Cluster. Be careful about using the select all idle worker button because that'll pull Gary 
and Bruce, it'll also pull guys that you've just rallied onto gases. So instead, just wait for that base to be up at about 16, and then you can just rally to the fourth. And look at my minimap. My minimap feels okay. There's a bit of a hole in the middle. There, there, and in that bottom left. Okay, guys, the Raven is still just following that unit. I'm going to send the Raven off to just go harass. The reason for that, let's build some reactors, is purely because I don't feel... Let's put the Vikings on the Raven key, actually. Okay, no, let's put the Vikings on the Raven key. I just feel it's... I didn't get Interference Matrix. I don't think its spells are really worth microing. So I'm just going to fly it in the back of my opponent's base, drop some auto turrets, and then just, just piss off, basically. Now, it's a good idea to click your opponent's Marines and check their upgrades, guys. I'm on 1-1. One, one, he's on 0-0. Zero, zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these Marines and these Metamats. I'm going to send those over to hunt those Marines down, put them on a drop key. And behind it, what am I doing? More Marines, more tanks. I'm going to build a few Liberators. Box, add to the army. Vikings control click, shift to the secondary army. So that double drop's going to come down there, guys, and it's going to try and hit this base, okay? At the same time, this Raven is going to come in, do an auto turret harass. Now, this is the point we just need to stabilize because or, or push. We need to make a decision. Stabilize or push. Stabilize is safer right now, but F it. I think it's usually a better idea to get aggressive to get control of the game. Don't sit back. Be assertive in your game of StarCraft. So this drop came in, guys. I'm just going to A-move this away because that's got his attention. If his attention's on the right, then we can we can pull his attention over there and just pull away with these guys. So we just pull them back. And then we can move down the left. I maxed out. It's probably a good idea to push. I'm scanning the right, and that's what I call a psychological scan, guys. Because I want him to think I'm about to attack there when I'm not. And this allows this whole army to move up in between his bases. And you can see just how brutal that position is going to be. We can move that tank over there. Grab a few more of these tanks, move them over there as well. Okay, we need some more marines there. Keep building marines. Now, I don't know if this whole army's coming here or not, guys. Looks like it is. But you can see moving up a ramp into a choke point of tanks doesn't go very well for him. And we took a really nice position. GG, well played. I always say Doom Drop's a nice, easy way to try and get wins in TBT, and you'd be surprised how many players die to it, even really top-tier players. Because um, even if I spot it with a Viking or two, he can just drop on top and do crazy damage. Now, what, what didn't I have behind this guy as well? I never set the rally point on these barracks, apparently. I had Liberators coming in as well. We could have started uh, plus three armor, plus three vehicle weapons. But for the most part, it's pretty good. It's What's mostly just, on? hey, grab some workers from there, grab some workers from there with the shift box. Take another base, take another base, take another base, build those three more starports, or two more starports if we want to. I was already at seven barracks, which is basically eight barracks. We managed to survive and get back in a decent position. <clears throat> Big, is there a particular reason you aren't opting for Banshees out of your starport in TVZ? Uh, Banshees are a very uh, easy to defend unit that are very fragile and take a lot of attention to get value. So they're a really solid kind of good defensive unit that is high skill. Um, and you can definitely use them to have very stable defensive play, but it's very hard to slow down a greedy Zerg with Banshees. So the big problem you run into is you're like, ah, I can stop Roach Bushes with this Banshee, but I can't really do any damage reliably with it without messing up my macro because of my own multitasking limitations right um whereas a liberator can get in there and do massive damage for minimal attention and apm so a liberator is a really good way to stop a greedy zerg in their tracks whereas a banshee can catch them off guard if they don't build spores or an overseer but uh it definitely takes more micro and them just kind of running drones away forces you to do so much micro with the banshee to get value <clears throat> How many workers should we aim for in TVT? Uh, depending on your skill level, if you stop at 66 in all matchups, that's totally fine. I don't think in any matchup you should really be going above 80 ever, unless you're playing super duper late game. And if you're playing very aggressively, you could be just sitting on 50 all game and just playing a very momentum focused play style. So really depends how you're playing the game. That was a pretty action packed TVT. If I was going to five and six and seven bases earlier and more easily 
I think I would probably go to, what do you guys reckon, like 80? 75, maybe 75, 80 workers. I would, I would go to faster. But because this was like, okay, I defended, I stabilized, I have a decent economy. Let's take control of the map before I get surprised by anything else. Let's, and then let's let's move forward and try to take some good fights. And uh, that worked out well. <clears throat> no inline third command center versus the front against Terran. So I always like to expand to the front. The reason why is if you expand in the uh, straight line, there's so many different attack angles they have. If you take your third and fourth in front of your main, you're defending your main from a doom drop. And notice how I put those spotting depots down. I would have put turrets on that edge as well once I move out to take my fourth base. So for me, having all my defense focused on that one front side where it's like as long as my main army's in front of my third and fourth, I'm also defending my main from a doom drop. Whereas if you expand in a straight line, to defend that straight line base, you're putting your army as far away from your main as possible, which means it's way more exposed to drops and doom drops. So that's, that's why I don't like doing it, but uh, it's purely your own kind of, you know, if you're like, no, I can defend it fine. You know, I like the straight line. I like it harder for them to push the front. Then uh, you can go for it. Yeah, there was a cute little, um, there was a cute little mind game, guys. There was actually a really cute little mind game. Remember I did that scan on the right rather than on the left? Because I was like, you know what? I think his army's near there. If I can spot his army with a scan on the right, that's good. Gives me the information I need, which is where's your army. But it also was like, oh, I'm looking over here. I'm about to attack over here. Because normally where your opponent scans is where their army is moving to. So that's actually really, really sick. Chris says, the whole concept of Bronze to GM isn't great. It defiles any notion of separate league or skill difference. What? Or any variety of player. Huh? The consensus of this is just that anyone who cares about this game should be GM, and if you're not, then have fun getting rolled forever by players much higher rated in your MMR division. I guess it is fun to beat up kids in your local karate class, uh, but there comes a point where you just gotta leave the forest to grow instead of burning it all the time. Oh, oh, okay, Chris doesn't know. Okay, okay, no, 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 yeah, for sure. I mean, you're just talking about smurfing, Chris. No, no, I'm anti-smurfing. This is, uh, this is, uh, organic, um, organic farm raised pasture raised uh virgin nerds um yeah obviously obviously repeatedly beating up people much lower than you on the ladder is 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 going to be kind of negative for the overall experience of the player base and it also encourages more smurfing even if you do it for education or entertainment you know i did a whole video about this um because yeah, I mean, basically, there's a lot of people out there who do a lot of smurfing for their their content because it makes very easy to consume content. Uh, I've never been particularly down with it. I did it for my first Bronze to GMs, and I was like, oh, man, I really don't. Even from the very start, like the very first line in my first Bronze to GM was like uh, just complaining about like, man, I really don't want to be smurfing at all. God damn it, pig, you're letting the forest grow. You're goddamn saving the environment. On analogy, thanks, mate. <laughs> yes. All right, guys, we are playing TVZ right now. Um, TVZ versus Fenrock. Let's go. Reaper Orbital. Let's do it. It would be super cool if there was like a uh, opt-in system for Bronze to GM in um, in the ladder, like Chess.com has, but. We'll see. All right, guys. So I'm sending the SCV scout across the map a little bit late. Let's get Gary over here to build the depot, then the factory. Command SCV. Then the mule. Start the marine there. Okay, so pretty clean opening so far, but I haven't really been talking to you guys through it. So let me fix that. Where's my third camera location? There. Fourth base over there. Fifth base over there. All right. Keep building SCVs. And go home that's a pool first guys so we lose our scv on the other side of the map no worries build a reactor marine can just hang out over here all right guys now we don't take a second gas why because we want to go third command center what's going on in the rear 
Oh, we're gonna get that Overlord, which is nice. I think you could have kept this alive. Did this a little bit differently. All right, guys, my Add Reaper on. is going to go across the map. It's going across later than it should have. Put that there, put that there. Let's get the Starport and the second gas. Remember, that goes down at the same time. Reaper's looking for Roaches right now, but... Oh, it's actually Speedlings. Okay. If it was Roaches, we'd build Cyclones. But as it is, guys, we're just going to have to raise fire. the wall. Now, in this scenario, they could attack your Command Center. Command Center. Let's drop a mule on the high ground and lift that command center off. He's running away, so let's land it. We'll work us back on gas. He didn't keep attacking the wall, so that's okay. Just make sure you're rallying to the inside. We'll build a few more of these aliens. If he has lings this early, he can't really have roaches very easily. So that's all good. We'll rally a lib across the map, get the tech lab started. And we can basically just get back to that SCV production, okay? Get the orbital going. And in this scenario, you're going to be very wary about follow-up harassment. So notice I'm sending my Hellions to scout both sides. Oh, hello! Because those Lings will be waiting out there. Alright, so we're going to A-move across the map, chase them back. Get a depot started, just so we don't forget it. Keep building SCVs, mules. Try and get stim. Try and do some little stutter step. We don't want to fight queens, though. And there is a third base. Okay, so let's pull back, guys. Hellions all in a control group. Put them in the middle of the map. Whoa! Okay, I just happened to be looking there. That was very lucky, guys. We're going to try and just do some stutter step. Remember, a lot of people try and attack way too frequently. You just want to click them away. A move. Click them away. A move. And now... Defensive stance. Lots of SCVs and mules. Reactor. Go ahead. React. Barracks. Barracks. I could have selected more and done the eBays at the same time. Get the depots. And guess what? If they're sacrificing that many lings, they're not building a lot of stuff. Now, I would send this lib in to go kill drones. But since the overlord's already so low, I might as well just kill it. And then I'm going to queue the liberator to go to the left. Because he's going to expect it from the right. Okay. Let's just focus on our macro. If your opponent's this dead set on doing damage to you, you don't need to do any damage to them. They're already handicapping themselves. Lower the depot in the wall. Keep building these SCVs. You've got three command centers. So you need to build a lot more SCVs than with your two command center builds. Keep dropping mules. Get Gar uh, Bruce to join Gary. They can build the depot wall. Like that. And then they can go over to the third. You can get this guy down there. The starport's going to build the reactor. The factory's going to lift off and build a reactor. We've got SCVs there. Let's rally to the third. So the select research. the command centers, deselect the floating one. Rally to the third. These two depot SCVs are going to start walling off that third base. Our base is under attack. One one never started. That's okay. Oh, it's a Hellion uh, Zergling there. Liberator will try to come in around the back and do a little CG siege, but that's all right if it doesn't get it. Circling there, queue up our aliens to kill it and come back to safety. It's combat shields, lots of marines. Cancel those two. Let's get three more barracks with tech labs, guys. A few more SCVs, that should get us up to 66, if not above. Liberated did a lot of damage. It did die, though. That's okay. Lower those depots, raise that one. You want the opening on the inside, guys. Rally everything to the natural. Marauder, Marauder. Lots of Marines, lots of Widow Mines, lots of Medivacs. F2, A move to the front. Rally points to the front. We're good. Let's get the Armory this time so we don't forget it. Let's control group these barracks. Add those as well. Keep building these depots. And we're just trying to create a wall off on both of those entrances, okay? Now, something else you can do is we can put a Widow Mine out this side. See any Ling Run buys from that side. Three Tech Labs, Marauder, Marauder, lots of Marines, lots of Widow Mines, and of course, Medivacs. Now, I've got three Orbitals, guys, so it's okay to keep dropping a few more Mules. Those will probably be the last ones. That's going to give me a crazy amount of production, okay? 
And as soon as this is done, we want to go lots of Marauders as well. So we need a lot of money to keep this up. All right, so now what can we do? We always like to send a drop across the map first. So we send that there, put that on a different key. And then the rest of our army on this key is going to push the left side. So we'll push across this bridge towards this third. Maybe he's got a fourth there as well. Lots of Marauders, lots of Marines, lots of Widow Mines, lots of Medivacs. Oh! Okay, run away, guys. Run away. Run, run, run. Okay, looks like we can fight those Lings okay, maybe. Okay, so first things first, guys. We just saw purchase. So we want to build a second factory, two gases, and swap this to a tech lab for tanks. Whoa! I mean, to be fair, he's making roaches and banelings. So he's kind of going both. I probably could have stuck with Widow Mines, but that's all right. We'll drop in the side. These guys are just going to chill. We're going to put this Marine out to spot any more runbys through the middle. Those guys on the left. Okay, so the army on the left, just pre-spread it. And we're maybe going to start clearing creep to distract him, because that drop on the right hasn't been spotted yet. Add-on is up and running. Build a lot of depots. Okay, get these guys back. Spread them out. All right, these guys are just going to click next to the mineral line, guys. Great reaction by him. Let's pull the medevac back. And then we can just kill the spore. We can pick up and pull it back. Okay, he's running in from there. Grab the SCVs, run them to the other base. Control click the marines and pull them back, guys. Stim the whole army. Control click the marines. Be ready to run them back if need be. What the hell is this? This is crazy. Really good movement by him. Woo! Okay. Grab these SCVs. Put on gas. Put on minerals. Build a fourth. Build a fifth. Lower these depots. We're going to F2 everything. Mineral field depleted. A move here. Rewall, raise all that. I'm gonna build a bunker there. That base just got killed instantly, that's fine. This drop is here, guys. We're gonna keep that separate on that side. He's being very annoying. We'll send a Marine to deal with that. More Marauders, more Marines. A few more depots. And we're gonna be building some more command centers. Okay, guys, stutter step time. I think we got enough to just A move that. Our base is under attack. Stim again. There's no banelings. All we're watching for is banelings. Are there banelings connected? Under, under fire. Put these guys on auto repair. Build as many SCVs as you can. He's running SCVs in from every side. Grab idle workers. Send to the third. You repair that. Go back to mining. All right, guys. We're going to queue this drop into the main. We're going to queue this drop around to the left. Then my main army is just going to try and defend, okay? More Marauders, more Marines. These guys are going to defend the third. Let's get this one. Trying to build tanks and medevacs here, guys. All right. So my army here is going to push this right side. We're going to put a Widow Mine in the middle. More Marauders, more Marines. Let's get 2-2 and vehicle weapons. Looks like he defended that one. Well done. Add on complete. Okay. So we're trying to just make sure these, these traps keep working, guys. Stim. All right, we're going to do a bit of the micro army. He's got borrowed banelings, I guess. Luckily, we scanned ahead. Control click the marines, pull them back. Uh, he's running away, so we can probably go back in. I don't know what his upgrades are. Let's try and click him. He's only on plus one carapace. Thank the Lord. Try and drop there. We're going to put this Widow Mine here, guys. Nothing left in that We're way too cluster. deep on creep right now. So these guys are just going to go there, okay? And he's trying to come across the map, so we need these guys to run forward. And we need to take new bases. So we're going to try and take a fifth there, a sixth there. Somebody, get me out of this Mineral field depleted. Scanning, because I'm like, what is going on right now? Okay. Run back with the Marines. Try to kill these Banelings. The 
This drop is going to go into his base. Nothing left in that mineral cluster. And the ground guys are just going to hang here, ready to counterattack. Our forces have There's a barred Zergling there. That's why that didn't land. We'll try and build a few more command centers. Make a planetary. Grab a lot of the workers. All right, we need to build more SCVs. Make sure, because I'm losing so many. Just click underneath, click in the metavax, and you should be fine. Mineral field depleted. All right, I want to get rid of the creep so he doesn't see me redropping the next time. Tell them to stop dropping and then pick up. And drop back there. This better be good. Run the SCVs away. Upgrade is ready. Command Trying center to borrow upgraded. guys in the mineral line. This is actually sick. Alright, I'm adding all the command centers to my hotkey. We go planetary, planetary. We got planetaries up in these bases, guys. It's huge. We also need to set rally points. Rally to the front. More marauders, more marines. Okay, cool. So, check it out, guys. Where are the hell of my tanks, by the way? These guys. Okay. These guys up here are on secondary army key. This whole army is, is the other army key, okay? So the problem I'm running into is he keeps actually coming across the map. These guys are just going to chill in the middle guarding this bridge. But I'm just trying to make myself, like, unkillable right now and speak of the devil. Okay, we're going to stim. We're going to siege the tanks. And remember, if the banelings get too far forward, just control click the marines, okay? Keep scanning. And just control click the marines, run them back, and then fight from just behind the marauders. Stim them again, because we don't want those marines to ever get touched. Okay. And he's going to tap out because we can run back. Especially when they use a Roach Bane army, but in general, when you get a heavy Marauder count, control click the Marines, pull them back, it makes a huge difference. And these guys, because he was throwing his whole army at me, if he kept pushing, these guys were going to just counterattack and, and basically run into his natural, kill all of his overlords. He didn't have a great economy. I did need to keep dropping this left side. I should have kept dropping it. But uh, shout out to him. Kind of confused me by going Roaches. I thought it was going to be Mass Roach. Uh, luckily, he forgot to upgrade for even longer than I did. But forward, baneling run buys, ling run buys, really great aggression. Lots of things I had to react to, and just lots of good ambushes from him in general. So really nice play from Fenrir. I, I love the way he applied pressure the entire game, and um, just friggin' awesome play all around. GG Fenrir. That was sick. Oh, I could hear something breaking. I didn't realize he was breaking those rocks. Oh. I remember thinking, like, what the hell do I hear getting killed by Zerglings right now? Uh, Fenrak did the, um... This is what I call pro-gamer anti-liberator micro. So, guys, the first thing you do against liberators is you grab your drones and you move them away. If you want to send them back, you send them, like, here and then shift-click them back on the minerals. But that click there was the funniest. But I'm going to grab... Oh, okay, I think he was just trying to send these guys back to mine early. I thought he was trying to pull those guys away from the Liberator. But what happens is often you'll siege a Liberator here and pros will control click the mineral line and they'll send all the drones to this mineral patch. And what happens is they can't all mine from that mineral patch. So they immediately walk back into the Lib zone and start dying. I call it pro gamer anti-Lib micro because like a low level player normally is smart enough to just send the workers here, which is what Fenrak did with the first one and then send them back when the Liberator's dealt with, you'll see pros instead be like, no, 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 I've just got to keep spam clicking the drones on this mineral patch. And I'm like, you know, you can just send them here, right? And then send them back later. And the pro's like, no, I must stack them on the minerals because it takes 10 times the actions. And I'm like, I think you're doing it wrong. I feel like there's so much happening with Terran that you need mouse accuracy with. How do you gain minimap awareness with so much to do? When do you have time to look at the minimap? Uh, I think you're kind of looking at it all the time. Because <laughs> there's a lot of commands. Like, every time we're sending drops across, we're sending that across on the minimap. Um, we're often grabbing a section of army and sending it out on the minimap. So we're giving, like, we give orders on the minimap a lot of the time. We say, hey, go there, guys. And that's something we do quite a bit. Um, other than that, you'll notice I was trying to get widow mine spotters out on the different paths. That map's really tricky because there's so many paths to cover. 
But if you get enough Widow Mines out there, it can be really, really fantastic. Why don't Zerg rush borrow against Terran? It feels like a very punishing mechanic for early Terran. Because they don't have so many scans. Because you'd need to stare at it to punish. So you've got so much to do in a game of Starcraft, Pygmy, please. Where you're already never optimally macroing and doing everything. So borrowing Banelink seems like a good idea, right? But if you're not a top tier player, you're not going to notice when the army moves over it. And you're going to look over and go, oh shit, I missed my chance to detonate it anyway. So Borrowed Banelings, it's not that good. Now, Borrowed Zerglings on bases is definitely uh, annoying. You don't want to... The thing is, you got to think about opportunity cost. So if you want to upgrade Burrow and get a Zergling Burrowed on, say, their third base before their command center lands, you need to invest that 100 minerals, 100 gas minutes ahead of time because it's a very long upgrade. And then when they see it, a high-level player will just instantly scan, clear it up, land the base. So... There are very tricky times where you, like, burrow against a Protoss and they don't have detection or something like that. But uh, generally speaking, it's it's kind of like once you're on 3 base plus, it is a no-brainer. It's a fantastic upgrade. But early game burrow is definitely a little bit... Um, it's it's kind of like investing money in something that might give you some advantages, but it's, uh, it's hard to pay for itself. It's kind of StarCraft in general. Like, 100 minerals, 100 gas doesn't really sound like a lot, but... Like everything in StarCraft, it's like it's all about the the investment versus the payoff. And it's like, well, if you just built four more drones with that amount of resources instead, four more drones can turn into like anything later on, right? So it's fantastic. Yeah. People should make Burrow more in mid to late game though. For show. Sure. Oh show, sure, dude. If you're enjoying Bronze to Jam, please don't forget to support. Big thanks to Magico, Catsvan, and everyone else, guys. If we fill up that keep BDG on a live goal, which I guess is a little more visible there. Uh, we will have another Diamond Part 3 episode next week to really flesh out these diamond builds. And I think that's going to be awesome. So I guess a little reminder, um, we're going to be going into a random game, but a little reminder, if you guys struggle to monitor the counterattacks and stuff more, definitely leaving a few more tanks and the occasional bunkers peppered around your bases does really limit um, what your opponent can do to... Uh, to catch you off guard with those run buys in Terran vs. Erg. Like, if your opponent's showing a style like that, where, and this is something I like to only do reactively, but you'll notice I left a lot more units at home in that last TVZ, specifically because I, um, I was like, hey, Fenrak keeps doing backstabs. He's playing really friggin' annoying. Like, and, and, and even from early on, remember with the Hellions, I was like, well, these Hellions don't need to actually do anything. And even the Liberator, I was like, I don't really need to commit with the Liberator at all. Now, I'm scouting straight away because this is a random player. So that's the main adjustment we're going to do. And, um... Oh, hello. Let's bring two SCVs over, guys. Raise the depot to protect. And, oh, we got a little two workers around. Right, keep queuing up workers, guys. Let's put these guys on gas. And, uh, we'll send another worker over to make sure we can defend... All right, so we're just going to leave that there for a little bit until we confirm what's going on. Is there a nexus, that sort of stuff. And it does look like he's backed off, so I think we're okay for now. Um, we want to try and still double up on these close patches if we can, guys. Reaper Orbital. And uh, I guess I'll return those minerals, come back down here. And, uh, meanwhile, we're just kind of go for another scout. And then come home. Assuming, oh, it's two gate, guys. So he's going two gate and a gas. Interesting. Okay. So let's go home, build the command center. We've got the Reaper coming in. Command center has been upgraded. And uh, we will go straight for a Marine and a second depot after building that mule and SCV there. All right. I want to go two. I think two Marines is normal. Should be fine. I do think it's very important we get that Bunker started straight away, because if he's not expanding he's doing a two-gate opening, guys, Bunker's going to make us feel much safer. So let's get that Bunker not too far forward. Oh, yeah. All right, let's build another SCV, another Did Marine. Teaching us how to play? Factory. All right, damn. Not my best micro, guys. Okay, that's two Stalkers, guys. Run away. Run away. All right, we're going to try and get out of there. All right, we got the second gas now on the way. Now, luckily, he's not on my side of the map yet, which is really good. So my Reaper's just going to hide. Build a reactor. 
Now, because he's not attacking me, I've got to wonder, are there Dark Templar? You know, what are we looking at? So I'm using the minimap right now. You see, I've queued the Reaper to check basically every corner just by shift clicking on the minimap. Nice, efficient way of doing that. Okay. Now, uh, I will build a Cyclone straight away because I think that's one of the best units for just surviving in this matchup. And I'm going to put these guys on auto repair. What's going right. on? I'm going to leave two SCVs next to the bunker because I'm a little bit worried about being busted. And let's get the starport going. And we're going to also start a second barracks. Center has been upgraded. Zealot here as well. Okay. Seems like some sort of insanely committed attack right now, guys. Reaper's still checking for DTs. I'm going to get an engineering bay maybe just in case. And let's just poke out front and see. Are there any stalkers about to come in? Okay. Tech lab. More marines. So we're still getting towards five barracks, engineering bay, all the standard stuff. And we're, we're not cutting worker production, most importantly, okay? Now, if you're worried about DTs, you just build one safety turret. And that's it. Now, it looks like my opponent's just done a bit of a suboptimal opening. Which is... Pretty much every random player in existence, so no surprises there. Um, <laughs> all right, let's just build tech labs on those. We'll get the tech lab on the factory. Uh, will we bother with the raven this game, guys? Yeah, why not? We'll just do the stuff we normally do. Let's go back to our normal game plan. So at this point, you're gonna sometimes feel like, man, my build sucks. Why did I overreact? You gotta remember, his expansion is so late in this game that it doesn't matter. Now we just saw he's building an oracle, so let's build a turret in our main. And there we go. Cyclone's gonna kill that. Or if not kill it, just do some very good damage. Build that, there we go. So we saw some other stuff going on. What was it, a robo, stalker sentry. So I think he's just playing a macro game. He's just done it in kind of an awkward fashion. Start a raven, this will build the tech lab. Now, if you wanna still batch things up the way you normally do, we could have done that. I'm doing things a little bit more adaptive. But as long as you keep producing your units, marines, tanks, SCVs, depots, nothing can go wrong. You can leave. I don't even need the cyclone there because we got, we got a turret in each base actually, so that's fine. <clears throat> and notice I dropped a scan just to confirm what was up. If you really need to, you can even drop another scan. I thought he was taking a third base. Now I know for sure. Two marauders, marine, marine. Oh, I actually built a fire. tech lab that's meant to be a reactor. Oh, what's that? Oh, hello. Okay. I, I forgot to build the uh, turret there, guys. Back on gas. I was going to build a turret in the mineral line because I knew that one wasn't covering it, but oh well. Alright. SCVs. We just need a few more, not too many. A couple more on gas. Two marauders, a couple marines. Two more barracks, you can get one on the tech lab, and the other one will build itself a reactor. And accidentally built that tech lab, remember that was meant to be a reactor. Add to control group, and we should be good. See if we can find an observer out here, since we know there was an observer building. A robo building, sorry. Let's drop that. Keep building depots. Get concussive shells and medevacs are very important, so let's get those. All right, guys. So, stim, shields, concussive is on the way, plus one attack's done. We're building widow mines, we've got five barracks up, we're queuing up depots. That's basically it. Tell the bunker, F2, control group, the raven following the tank, steal that onto a different control group. Put a few marine spotters around the map using a move and then just deselect lots of marauders lots of marines build one more of these reactor up here and we're getting ready to move out guys first two medevacs are out let's do it all right i've just queued up all my units as i move across the map what haven't we done well first of all bring the medevacs we haven't built any turrets in a little while let's make sure those guys queue up i want to get i'm just waiting for 100 minerals Man, my rally points are always not rallied today. Really lazy, guys. You find yourself falling into bad habits like this, try to fix it. 
So he's building Stargate units, Gateway units. This is a mixture of what we would call absolute garbage tier uh, army comp. We're going to just stim a few marines in to catch any stasis swords, set them off. And this is just such a bad army, unfortunately, for him that there's not much he can do. So we're going to stim a move. And after doing anti armor missile, siege up our tank. And the Stargate units just can't do anything here. They're not good units in frontal fights. We just stim a second time because that first one was probably about to run out. And we're just going to chill down here and say, come fight into my Widow Mine. So select your barracks, more Marauders, more Marines. Watch those pips down the bottom. He's going to recall some probes out of here, but I don't know, man. Going to run over there as well. These guys are just going to kill these pylons and move back to the Widow Mines. Just trying to lure him into the Widow Mines a little bit more. And then we can bring these guys over, and then we can stim the whole army, and we go in as one. Oh, he's actually going double Robo Colossus. So those are good units. Remember I was saying he didn't build any good units? Good units are out now. What do we build? Vikings. Okay. And the Colossus are there. My army is very vulnerable because they're very damaged. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna send a Raven around the left and we're gonna try and drop three auto turrets in the main. And when this new army arrives, guys, that's when we'll uh, take advantage. New army's here. So new army's on the bottom. This army's on the top. Notice we're trying to lure him into the open with these guys and then these other guys. We can just kind of stim the whole army and jump on top because he's got no support. And we're just stutter stepping forward. Easy peasy. The ravens are killing everything in the back as well. More marauders, more marines, more widow mines. And if your main mines out too much, guys, we can always just lift that, control click the workers, send them to the third, and it'll refresh our mining. GG's. <clears throat> no, 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 noise. So. I just saw a Colossus leg floating. Yeah, that's because this is um, underwater, man. Under the sea. Under the sea. Oh, we didn't get any fun physics until that last one. Whee! That's why you see chunks of, chunks of the units tend to go floating upwards when they die. Boop. Whee! Good stuff. So guys, if they won base and you defend your natural like this, is this being greedy? Yes, 100%. Um, what could we do if we want to play super safe here against a one base opening? Because we're in diamond now, so we're really going to start adjusting based on the meta and based on how hard people are all inning and that sort of stuff, right? We're going to adapt our defenses. You can defend a lot of stuff with a quick bunker on the low ground. The fact that the Stalkers stayed at home for my Reaper kind of gave me confidence in this. If those units came straight across the map, I might have had trouble defending that bunker, right? I think it would have barely defended. We would have had two Marines in it, but the Stalkers could have run past the bunker. Caused me a bit of trouble, that sort of stuff. Now, my factory was quite delayed here, and that's a big mistake. So you got to be really careful in these scenarios to not get too distracted from your build by early probe harass or super early scouting and trying to see exactly what your opponent's doing. If you find it's more comfortable, you're like, he's one basing, and you just want to build that bunker on the high ground, you can build the bunker on the high ground, let the command center finish, make orbital, lift it back to the high ground, wait till you've got a cyclone out or a tank, and then move down to the natural. Heck yeah. How do Banshees work under the sea? That's a good question. They use their, their engines use the water pressure like it's air. Didn't you know there's, there's oxygen in the water? That's why it's called a H2O. Otherwise it would just be H2. It would just be hydrogen. Liquid hydrogen. Yeah, so we got away with this. Now, to be fair, guys, rather than scouting everywhere for proxies, my Reaper should have just gone in and double checked to see if he expanded, but late. And that would have been the way to do it. So rather than checking everywhere for proxies, keeping an eye on their base count is probably a bit more important. 
I played super safe by going for an engineering bay and an early turret because I had a bit of a spidey sense. In general, you shouldn't indulge your spidey senses too much, but if it's just one clean decision you make, I will squeeze in engineering bay into turret and otherwise continue my build as normal. It's not the end of the world, you just gotta be disciplined. A lot of players, when they start going, oh, it could be, I think it's DTs, and they like just build three turrets for no reason, that's gonna really screw you over. Notice I only built the engineering bay and the turret quite late after getting up to three racks anyway, so it's not like it was crazy early. GG's. All right, guys, we got ourselves a TVP here against uh, May. It's on Site Delta. I haven't played too much of this map. Bad news. Yes. Notice you don't need to do this patrol path. I don't know. That's just a habit for me. Um, it is nice to have your unit already fully accelerated. So if you're not quite in the middle of the building, it like can get to it faster as like a Zerg. I don't know if it matters, honestly, as a Protoss or a Terran. So I feel like you don't need to get to the center point of the building, whereas with Zerg you do. The drone on? needs to be right in the middle in order to start the building. But it's just kind of a funky habit that I have. We'll go for that early SCV scout. I like the early SCV scout still in this matchup because it just allows me to have so much more time to respond. In TVT, I'm a little bit happier to just... We're doing a double gas build. We're super safe anyway. Let's skip the scout to make up for the, you know, the overly safe build order. But in TVP, I like to get that scout going nice and early. Actually, I wasn't doing that. I wasn't doing that. Ah, you scared me. Go right, ahead. Let's go. I wasn't SCV scouting previously, was I? Yeah, okay, I've just realized, guys, I have today been going off build by scouting early in this matchup. Center has been this is actually making the build a bit worse, because going for a Reaper and two Marines and a Bunker and an SCV scout, it's it's a little bit too much, all focused on just being, like, super safe early, and that does kind of slow the whole build down. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to completely uh, backpedal on it. We'll still just play it out the same way we normally do. But uh, in future games, we can probably skip that scout and just rely on the uh, two marines into the bunker. I'm listening. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 shit. Okay, guys, we we overscouted. Let's see if we can get out of there. Actually, I think I deserve to lose the Reaper for this one. So I'm going to throw the Reaper away just to show you guys what happens if we don't know what's going on. All right, now we start the reactor. Because I think it's really valuable. Because we always screw up and lose our Reaper sometimes. And I'm probably doing it way less than you guys do. So let's just let's just show you guys how to play it out without the Reaper scouting, okay? Remember, starport first. And then the moment we get 50 gas... Okay, orbital. Oops. Then we want to get the cyclone. The moment we get 50 gas. Because it's starport... Then Cyclone, then second Cyclone and Medivac. Cyclones and Medivacs take the same build time, remember. I'm um, sorry, a few button misclicks there, but we fixed that up Add now. Up Let's keep building Marines. We'll get the two Cyclones out, and we can get that pressure going. Bunker keeps us nice and safe here. You got 16-3-3, so good to rally to the natural. A few more SCVs coming in. Medivac and second Cyclone, as we said. And we can build the Depot with Gary. More Marines. All right. Is there a Stalker outside my base still? Can't wait. No. A few more SCVs here, guys. Gary's going to build another depot. All right, so the Marines are going to run to the front. We got these guys ready. Let's get two barracks. So we go tech lab, tech lab. And then we send that up to the main. All right. Build more SCVs and mules. Whoa. Okay. Oh, we're running into a big fight, guys. So we're going to unload the medevac here. So we A moved and then moved forward to make sure we, we did pretty well there, guys. I'm going to send the drop over still. We're just going to hide it on the edge. Build a raven, build a tank, build some marines. Get double gas yes, sir. and an engineering bay. Oops. Cue those guys back onto their gases. You don't want them to run off the gas. That's dumb. Uh, keep building depots with Gary. 
And we can also get two more barracks since I'm floating money. Now, I'm not going to go in with those cyclones right now, guys. Um, but if we get hit by stalkers, they have to immediately drop in the mineral line. So I'll use the minimap to do that if we get hit by blink, okay? Because I'm very vulnerable right now. I'm putting their CV out front so I can quickly repair in time, if that's the case. All right, guys, double reactor. Do our little swappy swap. Put our tank in a very conservative position. A few more SCVs and mules just to round out things. And I think we're good. Marauder, Marauder, Marine, Marine, Stim, Shields. Now, I think that drop, because it looked like it was coming at me with a, either a blink pressure or just a three or four gate prism stalker. On its own, going in, unless I have a ton of APM to watch it and monitor it, probably not a good idea, right? But if he's attacking me, a good idea to counterattack there. So that's why we have that stabilized there. Let's take a look around for any um, observers or anything like that. Doesn't look like there's any around, so that's good. Marauders, Marines, Widow Mines, Medivacs. Gary needs Bruce joining him. So they're going to queue up. Let's maybe take another look around here. I am worried about Blink, but I'm starting to think... How early that prism was? Maybe it wasn't actually a blink opening. All right, very nice. If we want, we can poke in here. Maybe just get a little scout. Maybe kill a probe or two. Now notice if there's nothing that can see me. That's really good. And we can see the twilight's very late. So there's no blink to worry about. No blink, no phoenix means we can actually just be really annoying with this drop. Because we don't need to leave until he's actually there with his army. Beautiful. More marauders, more marines. More Widow Mines, more Medivacs, bring everything to the front, set all the rally points to the front, We're done with and more depots. Beautiful. Concussive. Plus one armor, why not? Just keep building everything. Beautiful. Last couple of mules there. Ready. Research complete. All right, so I think we can just F2, unsiege that, get the Raven. And we're going to send a few Marine Scouts ahead of the army, remake the army group. Last two depots we'll probably need. More Marauders, more Marines, more Widow Mines, and more Medivacs. So we are queuing up extra depots there, of course. Most people ask about that. Oh, actually, guys, we've already got four Medivacs. Let's build Vikings, because we already saw a Colossus. And let's just move forward to a nice central position. If you want, you can always send an 8 marine drop around or something like that to really help out. That's a pretty scary army, guys. Yeah, I, I don't feel very confident. So we're going to send that drop around into that same little blind spot on the edge of the base. Send a marine ahead of my army. Keep building more marauders, more marines. And last two depots, okay? So we've got to always have a marine spotter in front of us. We'll send one down there as well. Ah, oh, look at that. Trying to feedback me. Hello. So our army's going to come down here. Against Colossus, you don't really want to fight into them head on. These guys are going to stim in because he's out of position. Actually, this is May. I believe May would be she. Ah, far out. I don't know why my tank went that far forward. All right, you don't actually want to fight though. So just run away. Get in the main. Mineral field depleted. Okay. So that does damage there. We can get rid of the shield battery. Scan. If we can depower, that would be very good. Get the observer, because why not? We put the scan on. And then these guys can go back there. Okay. So these guys are going to go up there and join that army. So we're going to have an army on the top and an army in the bottom. Keep building marauders and marines. This is your one-size-fits-all solution against... Um, uh, against Colossus, okay? It's don't build the units that counter them. I mean, you can build some Vikings to help, but more importantly, use your army in a way that does better against it. Kill it so there's... I'm attacking it so there's no chance to cancel. What the hell? Okay, this army doesn't have any medevacs. Oh, I've got my army kind of the wrong way around. But if we can surround from two sides, then we can do it okay. This army here... Oh, okay. So we've got an army on the top and an army on the bottom. Alright, we're going to try and come in from both sides. Alright, 
Okay. So we are giving them a bit too much time, which is definitely a mistake. Okay, so I've got to regroup because I got my medevacs the wrong way around. So this is what you want to do, guys. You want to drop everything. And then everything else is just going to attack the south, okay? That's a much simpler way of doing it, isn't it? Okay, these guys come down here. So, drop there. This better be good. That's only a small army. Our forces have opened fire. Talk to me. If you look up there, these guys you click on that, click on that battery and then A move. These guys seem to be winning, so they're gonna A move. I think these guys might be losing up here though. Are they though? They seem to be doing alright. Colossus could cause trouble. Roger that. The other army from the south looks like came in and killed a lot. Woo. GG, well played. So, a lot of people are going to be like, man, I can't do that from two sides. I took a lot longer. I could have played that a lot faster and finished that a lot quicker. But notice we're not really macroing. All I do is macro off my hotkeys. We don't look at home. I'm not making an armory. I'm not making ebays. I'm just every now and then Q Marauders, Q Marines, Q Widow Mines, Q Vikings. And I could have even queued up more of those units to make sure that that always did that. So what we're doing is we're allowing ourselves with this two base all in to really focus on getting used to using this army, positioning it correctly. And one of the main things is drop the main with a deep, big chunk of army, attack the third with another chunk of army. And this stops the Protoss from being able to clump their whole army together where the Colossus can really excel. And it allows you to kind of come in and use this kind of shorter ranged army to come in from multiple sides and find the weakness. Whereas if you attack front on, Colossus can shoot, pull back, shoot, pull back. Its force fields can block you and it's really hard to deal with. But if you can kind of split your army up and come in from multiple angles, it's very hard for the Protoss player to kind of split and be everywhere they want. Um, to defend it all so it's really tough for them to kind of hang on in that scenario now i do think may probably this move out here was definitely a big issue i was so shocked when that force field happened i was like wait what's happening right now i think that army does recall though and let's check may's control groups ah okay so yeah so you'll also may is freaking insanely good for not using control groups that's insane that's well and only 113 apm well done may I am impressed. It's rare that a player gets to, this, to, to your MMR and to get to this uh, level of execution without using army control groups. But it's incredibly hard for Protoss players to split their army and defend. And a lot of the players just in general don't use control groups um, for their armies. So for them, it's even harder. And uh, and that's like really rough. So May's kind of having to manually do... Oh, okay. So she control groups army too at that point. But yeah. She should have had an army kind of on a key just hanging here and an army on a key hanging there. And it's going to be tough either way because I'm just like very simple in my focus. I try kill you now. I have a 1-1 one -one upgrade advantage as well. So even though I'm way more all in, it's an issue. I think I normally use control groups, but my brain broke a little bit. Nice. Uh, yeah. So try to split them up, attack multiple sides, and if they kind of get spread out, Colossus on their own in the open are very weak. But it's when they're able to just chip away at you and force lots of stims out repeatedly, that's where things get rough. So you can kind of see how this, even on, with a two base all in, we're already starting to play a little bit more like what you might see pros do, where you attack the main, half the army, another half's here, you, you've got these bio squads kind of roaming around, you're Firing widow mines everywhere you go to create these little no-go zones and that's especially annoying because then even if they clear up an area there's often widow mines left there so one thing i could have added in that game is an armory because then with no observers they just can't clear the widow mines and that would be a nightmare because every time you drop in or move in anywhere just fire the widow mines and kick their ass <laughs> any advice on when to dive a colossus uh when it's unsupported and you have overwhelming numbers when to back off. Sometimes I get tunnel vision on killing that bad boy and lose my army. Yeah, if you look at Maru's recent TVPs, do the opposite of what he's done. And that's the only time I'll ever say that. But um, the last few times I've watched Maru, he's like crazy with it. He just balls his bio army up and he just like runs it into like Zealot Stalker 
to kill a Colossus, and he kills the Colossus, but he loses a lot of stuff doing it. I'm like, man, that seems kind of kind of crazy. Unless I see that bad boy sticking out. Like, if I look at my army, my chunk is way bigger. So, say you were doing the two-pronged attack that I just did, and then you see his whole army is up in his main, or like two-thirds of his army, but you've brought that whole drop back, joined up your whole armies at his third base, and you know that's only a small chunk of his army at the third, dive in and go for it. Because you can see there's one Colossus a few sentries or a few stalkers and zealots there's not much and you got this giant marauder ball you're like oh get in there click on it you know overwhelm but in general i i'm not really looking at it going can i dive the colossus i'm just going this is a good fight for me yes this is a bad fight for me right do you recommend target firing the colossus depends on the situation you definitely can do very well Oh yeah, um, it was a it was a prism pressure, and um, our drops kind of ran into each other, and it worked out really well for me. Got a few stalker kills and the prism. Did I get a third? No, we just floated our base down. Keeping it simple for TVP, because the build order is already a lot to learn. So, um, yeah, going three CC TVZ, doing a more advanced build here in TVP. TVT, I'm also going for a fast third. I think having one matchup with just two base, focus on killing them, focus on the units, gives it a bit more of a digestible approach. Um, obviously, you can swap it around if you guys want. Do these same openings, but do some sort of three base transition against Protoss, and then do an all in in TVT on two base or something like that. But yeah, Starcraft, baby. Bad news. Is Blizzard going to be in a better state now with Microsoft taking over? I don't think they could be in a worse state trip. So I would say it can't get worse. That's We don't really know, though. The, the thing finally went through like last week, right? Which is exciting news. Um, I think the main thing that could happen is them launching StarCraft on Game Pass and or saying, hey, why aren't we developing new StarCraft games? Because, you know... That's a whole market we could be getting onto game game pass. Alright guys, we've got barracks gas on the way. This is a TVT. Now this is actually uh, a really crazy map. Radhu set station. SCV ready. Was it Radhu set? That means like town square or something like that, guys? Or am I thinking of a different map name? Ah, Alright, so we rally onto the gas. So 16 first gas, 17 second gas. Um, they can't jump into your base on this map, so Reapers actually just aren't as strong or as scary on this map. But, uh... Big job, huh? If you want, you can still scout around for proxies, but it's really not that Yo. important. Alright, Reapers on the way, and an orbital. That's not how you say Radhuset. It's a Radhuset. I like how the guy puts, uh, he puts a squig Chris puts a squiggly, a squiggly circle above it. He's like, don't you know how to pronounce the squiggly circle? You don't speak Viking? Fool! Fool! They didn't put the squiggly circle in the map name. In StarCraft. So. Right, pull that third guy off gas. Let's go. Alright, if we want, we can just scout around nearby for proxies, but otherwise we'll just hang at home for a little bit. Like I said, we've been happy playing a blind TVT, which is a bit of a, you know, a little bit different. Keeping, but going Reaper and keeping it at home. Nice way to change things up. Get the command center. Get the Hellion. Starport in a moment. Back on gas though first. Keep building SCVs. Starport gotcha. goes down. Big job. And of course Bad the news. depot right after the starport. Reactors on the way. Reapers are still just hanging at the front. Alien is as well. If we want, we can poke across with those, but in general, it's safer to keep them at home. And the cyclone now coming in as well. Get the tech lab there. Third gas. Add on complete. 
Marines now producing two at a time. I think that could have been a little bit faster if we were a little bit better at the build. Get a tech lab on this factory. Start a raven. Send these guys down there. Those guys on gas. And you see the gas is finished just after the command center finishes. It could or even be starting to mine a little bit before, and I'd be pretty happy with that. I'm going to try and send my reapers out now to both of the watchtowers. Alright guys, this is going to be Gary. He's going to put a depot up there. And then... Third base there, fourth base there. Let's get another Raven. So yeah, this guy can just mine out the minerals to free up that expansion for later. On this map, get an extra tank building. It's one tank, two tanks. Remember, keeping up production, name of the game. Alien's gonna go across the map out front, see if there's any frontal pushes. These guys can be main army, that can be secondary army. Aha! Die, fool! Swap these around. Build more SCVs. Gary, keep building depots, will ya? Extra tanks on the way. Two Vikings, and now Stim. You don't need to go Stim this early. If you prefer to save that money, that's totally fine. Good. Another depot. Nothing left in that mineral cluster. Oh, I never put the Hellion back outside the base. No worries. The command center's on the way, extra depots building, extra tanks building. I remember with three tanks, that's when we move across the map. So get the Viking Raven rallied to the tank, keep building a few more Vikings, and behind it, lots of SCVs. Three Viking, extra Marine. Alright, so that's going to be our whole army. Everything else just rallies at home, okay? We want to keep building depots. We want to build two more barracks. And two more engineering bays. We're not there yet. So let's keep just building SCVs and mules. Alright, we're dropping auto turrets to try and overwhelm the Viking count, guys. And uh, that's going to be interesting. I don't think we can do much here. We got ambushed by Vikings. And we just had to use our units to try to defend as best we could. Just gonna hold position these units. Back to macro. Lots of command centers. Uh, where's my engineering bays and my fourth and fifth barracks? Let's build all those. Let's get the gases. Research the orbital. Two workers on gas. Rally to the third. Now, I don't want to stay here, guys, because I feel blind. We're gonna leave one marine, and then we're just gonna go home. Now we hit about 6:30 there, right? Let's make sure we go back and benchmark that when we're done the game. We forgot to do that earlier. It's really important to do that to see how well we did on our macro. Command center has been upgraded. All right, build more SCVs. We've got five barracks. Double upgrades now. Let's just leave a marine outside his base. Marine there. And go home. I've got pretty good map vision. But this map's kind of crazy. There's like a lot of maps to have vision on. So we're just building a few spotting depots out here. And uh, going from there. Let's build a second factory. Two gases on the third. Get the armory up here as well. The more practice you have doing this sort of build, the more you'll just do it naturally over and over again. I know I don't need those depots right now, but just getting them built out of habit. Okay, so he's sending a cyclone out right now. Let's build some medevacs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send these marines out to take the watchtower. What I could do is I can queue the Reaper to go home and then go back to it. That way I don't lose the unit. Third base looks saturated, so let's go to the fourth. Start it and rally to that command center, but we'll stop here at 70 workers, guys. That's more than enough. It's more than I kind of intended to do. 
Uh, more marines here. More We're tanks. Tech lab. More tank there as well. Minimap. Those units were already told to do their job, so it's totally chill. And we can put those guys in a medevac and just wait in the bottom right corner of the map. Are the rest of these guys shift one, control click the Vikings, shift two. And mix one liberator in, but otherwise nothing but Vikings, tanks, lots of marines. And remember guys, if you don't want to focus on building all the crazy production, you don't need to be like, oh, I'm going to friggin' focus on making... Uh, bloody uh, three more barracks and two more starports it's more important to be aggressive in tvt than anything else so as long as we're building vikings tanks and looking for an opening to push through we can smash keep in mind these are only mined by 10 minerals so we're gonna go plan an attack soon oh we might not have to actually right, we're gonna send a drop around the bottom get ready to send that in lots of marines building here Okay, yeah, we're going to move out to the, to this right side with our army while these marines retake the middle position. This drop's going to try to slide into the back of the base. And behind it, tanks, vikings, marines, okay? Now look at this, guys. He's stumbling into me with this drop. We just saw him leave that watchtower to the north. So we're going to try and make sure there's no way out of here by running forward. Looks like one of his medevacs got out, and that was it. Now this is where we grab all these SCVs, because this is... Really hard to attack on this map, but we want to mine open this back door. Still putting tanks and vikings right now. Notice if you attack, it's meant to be shared hit points. Right, so we're trying to just siege those tanks. Remember the 3v1 rule? Our SCVs are under fire. a really weird map I know. Okay, so now you can mine these minerals open. Now, he, what if he goes past? That's why we're not bringing these guys over, guys, just yet. We're just chilling here, and it's kind of on him to deal with it. Oh, shit. I should have manually mined them. They're going to take a while to open that door. So he's going to go across the map. So we have to go out front here to deal with it. But as he's to siege tanks there defensively, he has, but they're not covering the right side. So these guys can siege. Okay, these guys are going to pull back. Let's try and pull over here and just defend this base, okay? On the other side. Looks like those Vikings pulled back for whatever reason. Building more Upgrade marines, complete. building more tanks, building more vikings. You see, I can spend my money pretty well, just like this. By the numbers, boys. Wait a second. Aye, aye. That's that's high level minimap awareness, I'll admit, but it was the spotting depot that saw it from earlier in the game. It was this guy. And I was looking back here, because that's where my main attention was about to be. I was about to scan his army and go, Where are you? I was about to go, where are you? But I saw on the minimap, oh, red units going that way. And we intercepted that doom drop and we got by it. Now, what are we missing in this game that we definitely could add? A rally point on our second factory. This is probably just my biggest mistake today that I normally don't make, but for whatever reason today, I think it's like a subconscious habit normally that I do when I'm spamming through my keys and I'm just not hitting it. Thank you, Spartacris, for the big sub. Thank you so much, mate. So I could have set rally points. It's also, I mean, this is very dangerous, this area for being dropped. So going like that would be good. Sensor tower there. Sensor tower there would be nice. Sensor tower here. But I associate all those things with being defensive, which if I was being defensive, sure, we'd build more starports. We'd build three more barracks. We'd build a bunch of command centers to turn into orbitals so that we have unlimited money. We could do all that stuff, right? But, um... What I was focusing on more is like, hey, I've got an army. Let's go take a forward position. Let's create a problem for my opponent to deal with. And if you do that, it's really hard for them to kind of handle that forward position. It makes such a big difference. You know, it really does. And I think it's good because we're slowly scaling up kind of the APM. But in this matchup especially, it's not even the speed. It's just the situational awareness. And it's like the calm, knowing what to do, all the different pieces and how they fit together that make TVT a much cleaner and simpler matchup so he didn't go any ravens that's why he was able to kill kill my he had so many vikings out which is really nice 
Thank you so much, Spartacus, dude. What the hell? Send you with the $10 as well. If you're enjoying Bronze to GM and you enjoy this show, please do help keep it alive, guys. We are going to keep this goal up for tomorrow as well on the stream or the day after that. Uh, but help us uh, keep the show going. And um, yeah, thank you so much, everyone that's been playing as well. This is awesome. All right, so we got here with three tanks, two ravens, eight marines, a hellion, a cyclone, and uh, we could say two vikings. One viking's just barely behind that army. Let's write it down. Six minutes, 22, outside enemy natural. Three tanks, one cyclone, two ravens, two vikings, one hellion, eight marines. It's not a bad timing, right? Um, it's a good little, good little pressure moment. He was ready for it. On some maps, you can kind of rotate to a different angle. On this map, you can't really deny their third or anything, so I didn't focus too hard on it. Um, you know, you could try to work your way around the left, I guess, and get an angle, but I figure he's probably going to be winning the Viking fights. So, he did, did make a few mistakes with overcommitting with the Vikings, but it is what it is. And just remember, on this map, you can mine those minerals out and build your third on location. It's really nice. Could have taken the gas by the gold to change the gas and minerals, so you don't have to go to your base every time. Good point from Fenrak. Also, the whole point of bringing that many SCVs is it takes two trips on each mineral patch, so... It should take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight SCVs to open up a two space wide opening into that back door third once you kill the rocks. But I was stupid and I just clicked them on the minerals thinking, oh yeah, they'll mine it all out. And of course they they weren't going to. You're like, Ugh. All right, going up against the 3.7K Zerg, Abe Froman. Now for those who don't know, um, well, not for those who don't know, but I, I'm just really stunned by so far how much just giving myself that three base focus of, hey, I've got all my production, eight racks, one factory, rally bio mine and just fight, 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 fight. I think that's one of the biggest things. Because with Terran, it is quite finicky with like add-on swapping and this sort of stuff, and it can get overwhelming very easily if you let it. But I think as long as we simplify things and say, okay, we're doing a big three base eight racks pushing, yeah, we might float a command center or start a fourth command center, but it's never a priority. The priority is always me kill opponent now. Me make Marauders, Marines, Widow Mines, me kill, me kill. And doing that, it's good because I think we're, we're doing a really good job at being active with drops without, like I'm, I'm definitely not being as brutal with my drops as I could be. I could be infinitely more brutal with my drops if I wanted to be. So in case anyone's like, oh man, I can't do all that multi prong or whatever, like, you know, don't get me wrong, it takes time, it takes practice, but um, I could I could be dancing those drops around way faster, I could be microing a lot more brutally with stutter step and focus fire and all this stuff, but I think we're, I think we're striking a pretty fair balance. I'm not, you know, it's impossible to perfectly simulate a, a diamond player, nor would I want to, um, and part of it is there's such a big difference between diamond one and diamond three anyway, so I don't even know, it's like, <laughs> Which one of those are we trying to simulate exactly? I'd say here, now we're in part two, we're trying to be close to Diamond 2. And if we get to a part three next week, which I, I do hope we unlock, we're doing pretty okay on this goal behind me right now. Um, hopefully we can uh, start playing like a Diamond 1 upgraded. player. And when you're Diamond 1, you're almost a Masters player. You're pretty damn good at StarCraft. So guys, remember the hatchery should be finishing as your Reaper pops. My Reaper just popped out, hatchery just finished. Perfect. Now this is going to be our factory builder. That's Gary there, guys. Bad news. Well, not necessarily uh -huh. Gary in this matchup, is it? And we've got Marine over there, trying to deny some scouting info. Awesome. The reactor. You gonna get... Keep putting SCVs. And here we can do some stutter step. A oh, click, a click. Here comes the pain. That's oh, enough damage. If we got a drone, that's that's already way more damage than you can usually rely on. If you want to scout for a third base, you can, yeah, and pull the Reaper back to a very safe position after. What's going on? Command center there. SCV ready. All right. 
Groudon is up and running. So we're going to try and push that Overlord back. Starport going and the second gas. Oh, we can get some Hellions as well. Alright, he's going to come in now, so he baited me out. Well done. Reap is just going to come back for this moment. Command center has been upgraded. These guys on gas, get in there. And that second Hellion only now starting at 322. Which is not too early, but that's all right. Now, <clears throat> if you just leave it to attack, it's not going to be that efficient. But if you just micro it in front of the Overlord a little bit and then leave it, it's going to be way more effective. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice, guys. Day of Bronze to GM adds up. Lots of talking. Talking, talking, talking. Liberator is just going to rally across the map like that. Wait, what the f Did that Overlord get out? Well, now I'm triggered. Orbital Command Center's on the way. And we should be across the map already with these two Hellions clearing creep while the other Hellions just defend at home. Build those last two Hellions. Gary can start building depots over here. Get a Marine, get Stim. Looks like we killed a creep tumor, that's nice. Now, if you want, after doing that, you can run straight back in, because they usually replace it straight away. But you take damage for doing those sort of moves. So it's up to you if you think it's worth it. More SCVs, more mules, build a depot. Our Hellions are going to go to the middle of the map. Our Liberator going to the top. Let's queue the Liberator in. And let's do some macro, okay? Build those two barracks. Build two engineering bays. Notice I don't like to build them right next to each other because otherwise you sometimes get your SCVs trapped. But more SCVs, mules, double gas. Keeper. Actually, let's queue up more SCVs. All right, so it looks like that's unfortunate, guys. The Liberator is going to do nothing. He's super ready for it. That's right, we're going to move in. And try and fight the Zerglings if we can. And notice he moved around the mineral line, so we moved back inside the mineral line. Because we fought those Zerglings, it's a bit of a gamble to do that because you might not get any drone kills. Add on complete. So we're just going to shift click on these drones. Let's go home and macro more SCVs. Put guys on gas. I can't believe I managed to select exactly four workers there. What a fluke. You lift off there. You lift off there. Get one, one. Two more barracks. Three more because we might as well go straight to eight barracks, right? Research Lots of marines on the way, guys. Bad news. Ready. Let's get this guy out there. We can grab maybe six or seven of these guys. Deselect the floating command center rally there. And we can grab everything, bring it to the front. Now notice we're building Hellions just to start. Because remember... That lesson, if you lose all of your Hellions and you're worried about a Link counterattack, Widow Mines aren't going to help defend that very well on their own. You need to get up some Hellions just to help you secure this third. Speak of the Devil. Oh, he gets the, uh... The unit, that's annoying. Alright, guys. Two more reactors. Oh shit, we never lifted that over. Oh my god, so sloppy. Oh no, 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 that was meant to go there. Never mind, never mind. Okay, I'm, I'm getting confused now. Piggy's dumb. He's getting excited. Slow down, slow down. Alright, that's all the SCVs we need. That's going to be 67, guys. We don't need any more than that. Just rally one or two from your third and your natural over. And rally everything to the front. Widow mines. Get concussive, marauders, lots of marines, widow mines. And we can grab everything. And let's start pushing the front to clear some creep. Uh, we'll push down towards this third base, but through the middle. We'll go through the middle and then south, I think. Or maybe we'll break these rocks. We'd make that push path way easier. Alright, lots and lots of marines, lots and lots of medevacs. Get 2 2 in the near future. Oh my god. I was going to spread my units there, but we didn't get a chance to. And looks like we're going to run these SCPs away. 
Ooh, fool yo. Break those rocks. Two twos on the way. Vehicle plating. All right, lots of marauders, lots of marines. Remember, we need lots and lots of mules as well. Because you've got so many units you need to pump out here. All right, we're going to grab everything together. Now we're going to also go for the double drop. In this, inside the main base. Don't tell it to unload straight away. He has a pervert watching me this whole time. What the hell, man? All right, hide that up there. And now these guys can come through. I'm going to make hellbats. More marauders, more marines. Trying to put marine spotters everywhere so I can't get surprised by anything. Bring these guys down, shift two, add them to the army. Go back to mining, there's no banelings to worry about. Okay. Leave a widow mine there, I guess. Drop inside the main. We're gonna raise those depots, lower those ones. Push the bottom again. All right, we're not focus firing. We're just making sure they're all shooting. Too many people really over prioritize focus fire, guys. Nothing left in that mineral cluster. Now this Hydra's coming. You saw them on the low ground. Just pick up and just heal them back. Or actually, just wait. There we go. More marauders, more marines, more widow mines, more medevacs. Meanwhile, these guys. Our SCPs are under fire. Our base is under attack. I'm gonna try and shove forward. Let's cancel that. We're really worried about banelings, guys. Upgrade complete. All right, we're gonna aim move and control click the marines and pull them back. Let's pull these units back. Remember, lots of aim move. Pull back the exposed units. Pull back. I'm supply block right now, so I really want to do a supply block drop. Now we're trying to do the stutter step and then the hot pickup. Remember, that's one of the big main micros we want to learn how to do with this white widow mine style. Start 3 3, do some drops, shift 2, and this drop can come in as well at the same time. Kill that drop on that side, it's game over. Oh, it looks like he's attacking me. Okay, so these guys are going to stim, A move, fire the widow mine. Should have pulled back the marines, but it is what it is. Looks like that base is going to go down. Okay. Uh, do we have some depots we can build? Cool. Alright guys, so we don't actually have many bases right now, which is a problem. We're going to put a few workers on the third. We're going to try and float a command center over to the fourth. We're going to send these guys up north to secure that, okay? This one's just going to be an orbital for now. We'll try and take a few more bases since we've got so much money. Did he borrow there? No, not quite. Oh, okay. Get back down here. Nothing left in that mineral cluster. My main army is gonna aim, stim, and a move his base, and all I'm gonna focus on is microing here. These SCVs can try to run away. Stim one more time. Raise the depots. You can't leave. Back to mining. All right, that's no longer a priority. Let's get in with these guys. Now, it looks like we're doing game ending damage there. Ooh. So you see how we're kind of forcing him to kind of shove this way with his army, shove that way. And we're just kind of setting those units up where we don't have to micro them too much, preferably. But once they go Hydras, because Hydras outrange, yes, technically you can go tanks, but it's better to just shove forward and then when the banelings are coming in you just control click your marines pull them back and otherwise you can do stutter step pick up in the medevax pull away but there's like there's a bunch of different scenarios that we ran into where we did a mixture of, of the different types of micro so i hope you guys are watching and pick up on it please ask me questions about the details and that sort of stuff as we go as well leaving these depots down was a big mistake he didn't have banelings so if i had that wall up i could have just pulled scvs to repair Despite it, does he really get damage though? Each time my opponent does moves like this, it's costing him a lot of attention, a lot of APM. And I'm actually getting further ahead on the upgrades because my opponent didn't start 2-2. And notice just by keeping that drop in there, you know, 
this does so much and it's not about doing damage with the drop if you're not if you don't have an opportunity you just pull back come back later pull back come back later it's just to kind of pin your opponent's attention home the fact that we killed almost all of his queens obviously was massive we got a few drones down there as well this was really big we just pulled back started pushing south setting up our spready I've seen some players use the engineering base to make the natural wall faster. Is it too vulnerable for newer players or just preference? Purely just preference. It's really nice. I mean, it's a pretty solid wall off. Losing your upgrades does really suck, but it's a very solid wall off. So you definitely can um, can finish that wall off with the double engineering bay. So here I stutter step the whole army. I only really needed to be stutter stepping the Marines. And then we just ran south, realizing, oh, there's a hatchery down there. Yeah. So you can see the second and third barracks go down at about, yeah, about just before five minutes in this game. I end up getting second and third barracks and then double engineering bay. So I could definitely have built the engineering bays there to seal the wall off. I think that's not a bad way to play, guys. And that also means, like, if you guys, when you move out with your Hellion Lib, get hit by Ling Run buys a lot, it's a nice way to make sure you're safe against that for sure. My lib got completely shut down, by the way, guys. If my lib had queued further around and come in from the middle back and sieged just on the edge, it would have been safer. But we got in trouble because we didn't do that. We sieged it in a very dangerous position and we got punished. Obviously, if you're watching the lib as it comes in, you can avoid a spore like that manually. But like I said, if I just sieged from over here, barely on the two patches, that would have been really, really nice. Any way to improve micro, or is it just play more? Uh, I mean, it's it's always about building systems. So this is the thing, is people think micro is just about clicking things frantically really quickly. But a lot of players who I notice, I'm like, they're like, I'm like, they're like, I'm a bad micro player. And if I ask them, I'm like, well, what are you trying to do in this situation? They're like, I don't know. And I'm like, okay, well, you can't be good at something if you don't know what it is you're trying to do. So you want to develop systems. Um, the things so this is why I like just boxing and clicking to spread units out it's something we've talked about extensively in this bronze to gm is setting up a big pre-spread of bio and and kind of you know setting those units up and being able to spread units quickly is such a skill and it's kind of the center of many other skills because being able to just drag an accurate box and then click your units elsewhere is really nice having dpi on your mouse that's not too high can help with that like you know i can pause right now i can go click the far right marine uh, second from the right bam uh far right marine i can be pretty quick at that i'm not crazy quick compared to some people but i'm reasonably fast at kind of individually clicking all of these marines right and part of that's just tons of hours of practice part of it's also though that i massively slowed down my mouse dpi i used to use 1800 i now use 800 it's way more you know reliable with the clicks and the boxes um Box click, box click, box click. You know, very easy to spread units out when you have a system for it. But a lot of people really mess up. Is there an easy way to cancel the medevac drop if you de-click the medevac? Yeah, you have to press stop, Bowtie. So if you guys hear me say stop the drop, I actually am selecting the medevacs and pressing the stop command. And then I might... So I often do that. If I'm unloading in their base, which you guys are going to see in a few minutes up here. Say I unload it up here. And then the Ling Bane, there's like Ling Bane on top of me. And I'm like, whoa, stop unloading. First thing I'm going to do here is select it, press stop, which is this button here. H for me on my keyboard because I use the right side of the keyboard because I'm a weirdo who uses the core. And then I would right click on the medevacs to pick up whatever's dropped already. So I'd be like, box it, stop, or select the hotkey, number one, stop. And then I box, click, click, and get back in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you guys want to get expert with mouse control, look up how to get better aim and counter-strike or something like that <laughs> when it comes to just pure mouse control that's definitely nice but generally just having organized systems you'll get so much better can't micro problems just be fixed with hacks absolutely guys for sure i have a dpi of 4200 and i then lower in-game movements to the point where i like it says blueberry i don't know much about mouse stuff but people who know more than me have said that that creates a lot of inconsistency because apparently having a higher DPI basically just skips What's pixels to increase your uh, your mouse speed. 
So it's better for you to lower your DPI and increase your in-game sensitivity as what I've heard. I have no idea how valid that is. This is kind of the old wisdom from the early StarCraft days. Um, almost all pro gamers use under a thousand. Uh, most use 800, that's the most common. One or two might use 400, but that's usually pretty low for StarCraft. Usually 800 is kind of the standard. According to Twitch chat, several users 700. Speaking of hacks, how do tournament runners deal with hacking? Uh, you don't really have to. We're not going to scout this game, remember? We don't really need to scout because we've got the Reaper for that, guys. So, is it perfectly safe against every build? No. But, I think because we build two Marines in a bunker, we'll be pretty alright versus most things. And we're happy to take the very small risk, but to have a nice, efficient opening. I mean, if you're at a LAN tournament, you can't really cheat. Like, they, 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 they can see behind your monitor... I don't even know if you can install, like some of them, you can't even install your own apps or things. You need the admin to come over to help you install your like own keyboard and mouse software and stuff like that. So it is what it is. Uh, online tournaments. Thankfully, you can usually tell if someone's hacking. Amateur tournaments. It's not so easy though. All right, guys. So he's being a dickhead. So we're just going to hop off here. Bring this guy back up here to build the depot. And the Reaper can kill that. Okay. Our SCV and Mule. Fire. We want to build a Marine right now. Oh, yeah, baby. And remember, we then want to check for proxies. If you don't SCV scout, it's very important to check for proxies. I'm just going to check for proxy gates and then move across the map. We can now get a second gas, keep building our CVs. The depot started. Remember, we want to go straight for the starport before the cyclone. Unless we think we're in danger, in which case we can change that around. All right, we can put guys on gas because we don't really want to enter the Reaper micro situation until we're ready. Where are you? Oh, oh, where's your production? Okay, good probe pull. I wasn't expecting him to pull probes like that. Very well done. Now we know the pylon's there, so we can just scan that in a little bit if we really want to confirm what he's up to. Keep building SCVs and mules. Remember, hold down the cyclone key the moment we hit 50 gas. There we go. Now if that Adept Shades pass, we just need to run away from it. If you're worried about that, you can Add drop the mule in the high ground for the first one, and only then drop on the low ground Command after that. Center has been upgraded. Start building these marines, put the cyclone on the way. Then second Cyclone and Medivac will come out in the near future as well. So I did drop those mules. I think the next one we'll scan down there just to check. Um, it is nice to see what tech they're doing. Just allows you to be mentally prepared for whatever's going to happen in the next minute or so. We can also just check outside our base with this Cyclone before going back to get picked up. And Gary, after building the Starport, should be starting the Depot, as we've talked about earlier on. All right. Check it, guys. So we've got the six Marines. They're going to march across the map, ready to do a little pressure on the front. And we've got two tech labs here. Just building a few more SCVs. And there we go. All right, so we're getting ready to go drop inside the main. We've got the two more barracks. We're building Raven Tank. We've got another depot. Add on complete. Oh, that's a lot of mules still sitting around. Add on what am I doing? Up and running. Raven and tank on the way. I did forget to do that scan I was talking about, guys. Let's use that. I could have used my hotkey for that. I didn't need to look at it on the map. That was unnecessary mouse control that you do not need to be able to do. And the Marines are just going to walk into the natural mineral line while the Cyclones drop inside the main. Now that's a lot of charge zealots, guys. So we're going to build a bunch of bunkers. We're going to try and kill some pylons here, actually. Alright, he doesn't have anything that shoots up, so we're going to drop there. And all we're doing, guys, is building marines right now. We're going to build a viking. Um, tank is going to try and hide on the low ground, I think. We're going to try and wall off so the charge lots can't surround us, okay? We're also going to put a bunker on the high ground. Some guys there. I sacrificed the drop because it's more important for me to micro right now. Okay. 
that there too. Okay. Nothing but marines. The Viking to stop the prism. And then this needs to build a reactor and start building widow mines. As I was saying. So. Run the SCVs away, guys. Just box click, box click, box click. Our base is under attack. Okay. Hey, move the SCVs. What's happening in the main? Are we okay there? It's like the prism's gonna go down. The marines are trying to fight this. Be back to mining. What about the natural? Oh, we lost the tank. Right, put those guys on auto repair. Try and put these guys over now. I think we're alive. Add on complete. Build SCVs. Build double engineering bay. Yo, bad news. Big job. What's going? Go ahead. SCV ready. All right, guys. Just making sure everything's all good. I think we can start selling bunkers now. We can get stim and shields in a moment. Notice I'm very SCV mule focused. And because the Vikings guarding the main, let's get everything else on the natural. Stim, shields, marauder, marauder, and then marine, marine. Add on is up and running. Oh, Stay these guys ready. apparently were my hotkey, guys. Okay, we put guys on gas. Now I went double upgrades. Normally I'd only go single upgrades, guys. So a bit of awkward muscle memory there. That's all right. I guess we just play double upgrades this game. We want to build medevacs and widow mines. Widow mines especially are really good. And if someone goes charge lots, you always want to build an armory. And if you can do some widow mine drops, it's usually going to be checkmate. Now, in this case, we did see he actually had an observer. So it might not be as effective. But I would not be surprised if it is. So we're queuing up two marauders on each barracks. Uh, still dropping some mules. More of this stuff. I don't know where the Viking went. So we're going to put that Viking still patrolling in the main. Add these to the control group. More widow mines, more medevacs. And should be it. So the armory means if they don't have a guy, then they'll be screwed. Now, I'm actually queuing this. I'm using shift and left click on the portrait to unload. So notice, guys, I don't need to click to unload. All I need to do is boost. And then notice I don't even have the medevac selected. It's already told to unload and then move on. This is a cool thing you can do to queue up to bar to drop things in different locations without actually having to tell them to drop it each time. But with something like a widow mine, you still need to look back in order to borrow it. So it's questionable how much that really helps you out. I'm, I usually use it for dropping like a few widow mines in a really chaotic situation, and then I come back in a little bit to um, to borrow them a little later. All right, guys, we're gonna move across the map with our little push. Notice the widow mines didn't get dealt with, so we're gonna target uh, a widow mine right in the middle. Oh, that one didn't actually target. That's all right. So notice we're coming through the middle of the map. More marauders, more marines, more widow mines. We've got two two upgrades we can start as well, even though we're kind of doing a two base all in. I started the third, but we're not really planning to build any workers for it. We're gonna scan here, and that's a pretty big army, guys. So we're going to drop anti-armor missile. And we're just going to try and start a step away. Move, A move, move, A move. Drop some auto turrets. It's a really good army for him. Move, A move, drop down the stim because we could see that one wore off. You can drop it just a second before it wears off. That's usually pretty nice. So he's done pretty well. We're just going to chill because we need to go more marauders, more marines, more depots, more widow mines, more medevacs. Okay. And this is where, of course, doing more drops or multi-prong can really help you out. Oh. Cool, we caught a Widow Mine. All right, guys, we're going to borrow the Widow Mines. And then we're going to stutter step. Just run away from the Zealots. Uh, there don't seem to be many Zealots, so we could argue it might be worth just chilling now. Now, notice we change targets from one Immortal and then the other Immortal. The entire goal of doing that is that allows you to set off the barrier on one, change targets to the other, set off its barrier, and then change back to the first one. But yeah. Twitch chat ember. GG, mate. Well played. That was really well done. Um, the charge all in is a scary all in because pre stim, your marines suck. 
against it. So I really want to go over this response in detail because it's so, so important to basically distract him with the cyclone to buy myself a few more seconds. And then, um, yeah, my Marines immediately tried to just run away. And it looks like they actually got home, believe it or not. I did not think they would get home. But I was like, look, just lose the Cyclones. I don't care anything to distract him. And especially if I can get him to like F2 his Prism home, that'll be great. We kill a few probes. We end up losing the Cyclones. But what do we do? I wall off the front with Triple Bunker because I know I just need to protect these Marines. They'll die so quickly to Zealots. I don't even bother swapping onto add-ons. I get a Viking because I know he's going to go Warp Prism in my main. And to be fair, I should have rallied it over there as well. And I could probably just build Widow Mines one at a time because Widow Mines counter Zealots really well. But notice that if I lose control of my main, that's fine. I'll just pull back to my ramp. I can raise this depot and hide behind it or just hide in the choke point where only two Zealots can fight at a time. Melee units generally have way better stats than ranged units. And if you let them surround you or you give them the surface area to all engage, you're kind of screwed. But I basically was just like, nope, don't take any chances. Just pull back to this choke point here. And notice the SCVs are actually blocking. I didn't even hold position. These SCVs, I just moved them there. That's all I did. But the Zealots, because those aren't combat units, they can't move past. Or, or they, they won't automatically attack them. And they were kind of stuck trying to get past. So pull back to choke points. You just need to get a critical mass because the more units you get, the better. Now these guys, I did a, a, a move to try and block from my siege tank. And I was like, look, if I lose a bunch of SCVs, I don't really care. I could have lost 10, 15 more SCVs here and still been totally fine as long as I survive. And the moment I defended, I'm like, look, I got rid of the prism, so I feel pretty safe with three bunkers at the front. Just get my army back to the front. Try and get stim shields, more bio building. And, um, and yeah, I was very lucky that so many SCVs just barely survived in the natural. That was just a massive fluke. Thanks for the Bezos box. So great all in from Carson. Very hard to stop this one if you get caught off guard. But that's kind of the power of us doing some pressure and, and that sort of stuff. And um, what if I did scan, by the way? What if I ended up scanning? Because remember, we did our first mule drop on the natural, which I think is that one, right? Because, yeah. So that's the first mule drop here. So what if I dropped the second one at like 4.30? Would I have realized what was happening, I wonder? say i do it a few seconds late about now yeah if i scan right now guys in this main i see a twilight and i see a ton of gateways even if i don't see those top two gateways though i probably would i'm like whoa why have you got four gateways down here already and then if i see two more up there as well i'm, I'm freaking the heck out i'm sending my marines home immediately i'd probably continue with my cyclone drop but i'd definitely be thinking about walling off because if it's mass charge or mass adapt walling off really helps you out and even if it's just a semi-wall kind of walling off one side, that can be really nice also. So uh, yeah, good stuff, man. Really good attempt from Carson. Forced me to react uh, quite a bit there. I don't think this was a perfect response, but I think it kind of just prioritizes uh, a couple of key points, which we should probably write down. So let's, let's talk about that. So extra bunkers. Um, try to wall off the front. Viking to defend Prism in the main. Pull everything back to a central defense around your ramp slash bunkers slash wall off. Don't get split up and spread out. Focus on marine production, marine mine production over everything else. Okay to build marauders on tech lab racks if you really want um once you get you know a critical number of units together the the zealots struggle yeah make sure you hide behind your buildings and sit on ramps and in choke points where the zealots can't surround. Zealots struggle. Once you get stim, shields, etc. And a good mine count, the zealots fall off super hard. Cool. I think the Viking is probably the biggest point.
How do you count a mass mine drop in ZVT, says Woof Woof My Roof? Uh, well, you could just chuck like a few spores around your bases and split your queens up between your bases. If you get, if they're like continually widow mine dropping, um, put two spores at each base, as well as leave a few queens on your edge bases. And um, you could also leave some zerglings patrolling in your bases. If it's like early on and you don't have that much queen spore yet. Uh, if you leave a few little packs of zerglings patrolling, just 10 zerglings can usually kill widow mines before they get burrowed. So that can work as well. What are some lessons we got from TVZ in this session, gang? The decisive pressure of fast eight racks is really nice. Putting Zerg on the back foot. Um, once we have a bunch of Marauders, it's really nice because we can just control click micro our Marines back. And it's a really simple, easy form of micro with massive effect. Um, there's a few really good things. Like there is a few really nice different things that we, we kind of picked up. Um, drops uh, were really nice as well. Uh, oh yeah, we, we learned, we explained what press stop on your medevax to stop unloading. If they're unloading on top of Ling Bane. <laughs> yeah. Um, attacking multiple locations is absolutely key for bio mine styles. And that was really huge as well. Uh, constantly producing off our control groups in between and after every single skirmish meant we always had a new army at home to deal with run bias. I think that was also really big. And this kind of covers all three matchups, but especially TVZ. Yeah. TVP, I think lessons from this session. I think we learned a little bit about how um, Verse Colossus attacking the third whilst dropping the domain repeatedly to force them to split up is massive. Add an armory. That's right, Australian spelling. To uh, fuck you, stop trying to autocorrect me, American Google Docs. How dare ye? Add an armory to make widow mines invisible um, and keep killing observers with ravens and then scans. Can be really nice. Um, yeah, that just creates, this just creates a nightmare for the Protoss. As Widow Mines get left all over their bases and in between their bases, even after they hold your push. Uh, lift the main to the third to keep your mining steady and prolong the endless two base push. Cool. I think those were some really good lessons we got in TVP, TVZ, and uh, TVT. I think staying on five racks to factory and focusing more on army is a nice way to take control of the matchup. Getting forward positions is always key in this matchup. It puts pressure on the opponent to do something about it and allows us to maneuver and uh, find openings. I can't remember if you talked about walling the third in the other episode. Oh, for TVZ, that's a good idea. Gary and Bruce should wall off all entrances to your third. If they keep doing run buys and backstabs constantly, add a bunker at your third and put Widow Mines on all the attack paths to spot their army movements coming across the map.